Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie show on the planet Earth, the John Campus Show. Coming from right here on my YouTube channel. I am, of course, your host, John Campia, and it is an awesome honor and privilege, as it is every day, to have you, our international friends, gather around as we all talk about our favorite things in the world, movies, movie news, TV, streaming, and all sorts of good stuff. And it's game day! Game day! The new episode of She-Hulk is tonight. I'm very excited, but I really liked the first episode more than I thought that I would. Uh, looking forward to seeing where this show goes, hopefully, because there's been a bunch of the shows that I liked the first episode and didn't quite like the second. So here's hoping this one breaks that, that streak. Anyway, sitting over here, of course, the one and the only, Mr. Robert Meyer Burnett. Robert, how you doing? John, it's surprise day. We're halfway through the week. Anything can happen, and it usually does. Wow. That feels ominous. Do I have to look over my shoulder for the whole I, show? I, you know, I don't know. Maybe. Big thing sitting beside blue. him, of course. Chris Carr is here. Chris, how you doing? I'm good. I'm a little blue because my brother leaves town today. But oh. other than that, you know, I've got good TV. I've got you guys. So that's good. Oh, uh, But at least you got to visit with your brother. Exactly. It was a whole week. So it was really, really nice. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Sitting over here, I get to see my brother-in-law every, every freaking day. day. <laughs> Bring over. I'm turning you guys in the live chat. Right? How you doing? <laughs> you know what? I did the impossible. What's that? I finally watched Dune. Oh, you got all the way through it? In completion? Yes. Wow. My first time. First time watching the whole thing. It's a long movie. It's a long movie. How it's many pretty naps? good. I like the Jason Momoa character. <laughs> Too bad he's not around no more. <laughs> um, um, well, you know. Well, just wait. Well, you know, the, fir uh, you know, the first 15 to 20 minutes, I've watched about 12 times. But I finally got... <laughs> through the months. whole thing <laughs> last night so yeah it, yeah. it was pretty good, good i mean job, Ray. yeah the beginning was a little slow you know but mm -hmm. world building man world yep. building yep. sitting beside ray of course running the show today producer jonathan reeves jonathan how you doing today oh, man i'm doing good how are you guys doing Excellent. And it is, of course, the most important that we have you guys joining us today. Thanks so much for being here. And here's how today's show is going to go. We're going to break the show down into two parts. In the first half of the show, we're going to talk about some predetermined topics. Then in the second half of the show, we're going to take your live comments and questions. Here's how you get one on. Number one, you got to be watching live. Number two, when we get to the end of the main topics, we're going to be announcing that we're opening up the Super Chats. And when we do, that's your cue to fire in your thoughts, opinions, theories, and questions, whatever. And we'll spend the second half of the show just addressing those. And we look forward to it. And a little bit of housekeeping. If you guys need your daily dose of the John Campion Show, but you can't always be in front of a YouTube video, good news. There's an audio-only version called the John Campy Show Podcast. Go on to your favorite podcasting app of choice, search for it, subscribe to it today, so it'll be there when you need it. And, big thing. Okay, guys. Listen to me. You and me. All right. Got a big favor. I got a task mm. for all of you to do right now. All right? Yep. You're going to help us out. We have a brand new podcast feed, a brand new podcast feed that is simply called After Show. And this is the podcast feed where we do our pregame shows and postgame shows for Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, She-Hulk. It'll be where we're doing Andor and Lord of the Rings and all of our other after shows. And it is now up there. So here's what I would like you guys to do if you would do this for us. I would love, now just by launching it yesterday, apparently we hit number 135 on the iTunes charts. Great. I want to crack the top 50. So the way we can do that is if all of you, and down in the description of this video, you'll find a link. Dream to, at the same time. And if we dream at the same time. If we time, all dream yes. it at the same time. The dream of a thousand cats. The dream of a thousand after shows. sounds very Sandman-ish of it. But go down, subscribe to it today. Even if you don't plan on listening to a single episode, go subscribe to it today. Rate it, all that kind of stuff. I want to see if we can get this thing cracked into the top 50. It would be awesome if we can. So if you would do that for us, that would be really awesome of you. All right. With all that down, guys, we got a loaded show today, so we got to get moving. And we're going to start with a couple of off the tops, and one of those is this. You know, as much as I mocked NBC Universal streaming service name, which is still a bad name, by the way, Peacock, um, it actually has quietly become a favorite of mine to jump into and tune into and, and watch. I mean, obviously, I'm in there a lot watching Parks and Rec, and Anne has been watching The Office a lot lately on it, and, yeah. and, a, and a lot of other stuff, too. It's actually become a go-to streamer for me. I really quite like it, despite the name. I really like Peacock. One of the things I've never understood, though, and I've, I've always known it's probably because of some backdoor deals and licensing and all that kind of stuff, but NBC Universal owns Peacock. Why are NBC shows not on there? Why don't 
why doesn't the new episode of Chicago PD air on NBC? And then immediately, why does it go to Hulu instead of going on to Peacock? And of course, NBC Universal still owns one third of Hulu, so there's a bet there. But now that is no more. Variety has now reported that Peacock, as of September, is going to be getting the NBC shows. The NBC shows are now going to not go to Hulu, but instead they're going to come over to Peacock. Uh, it says NBC series that will become exclusively available on Peacock include franchises like the Law and Order franchise, uh, Chicago Med, Fire, and Chicago PD. Uh, the network late night lineups, including The Tonight Show with D Jimmy Fallon, Seth Meyers, Saturday Night Live, return of series such as La Brea, New Amsterdam, Yen Rock, basically the NBC rundown. This is a significant development if you're Peacock. Getting that kind of content, because listen, as much as streaming is king, a lot of people still watch these network shows. And to now be the exclusive home online for these things, I think this is a major shift for them. It's not suddenly going to put them on the same level as Netflix or Disney+, Plus, but I think this is a big move for them. Rob, you look at this. How significant, or, or maybe am I overestimating how significant this is for Peacock? No, I think it is pretty significant because all of the you know, the streamers are going to consolidate and take the things like NBC, all of their content's eventually going to come yeah. back to them. And that's the whole point is that whether you're talking about NBC, Universal, whether you're talking about Disney, whether you're talking about Warner Brothers with HBO Max, all of the studios are becoming, you know, their own lands, so to speak. I mean, when you go to Disney Plus, you get Disney's legacy of entertainment. Same thing is going to be true of, of uh, Peacock. Everything NBC will be under that win uh, under that umbrella as well it should be chris you hear about this how big of a deal is this or or is it not i mean it's a it's a big deal but it makes sense it feels like this should have happened already i don't know why nbc hadn't pulled their things to put it on their own streaming service ahead of time and i'm sure it had something to do with some deals that were in place or something like that yeah. for usage but it just makes more sense to have everyone have their own things on their own streamers so i already use peacock a lot i use it to watch wrestling and i can't wait to watch Law and Order on it. I forgot about that. WWE has their stuff on there too, yep. right? I mm -hmm. totally forgot about that. We're, we were just uh, scoping out tickets for WrestleMania. Ooh. We think we're going to get it. We think because it's been going to be in LA yeah. at, at SoFi. So mm -hmm. I think we're going to get some tickets. But oh, fancy. We'll, we'll see how many and <laughs> how, how big we'll splurge. How, how good of a seat <laughs> do we want to get? Are we going to go nosebleeds? Anyway, guys, question is for you. Have you guys installed Peacock yet? Do you watch some stuff on there? Do you not? Will this do anything to get you thinking about installing it. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there. Okay, guys, with that down, let's do another off the top, and that is this. You know, in the world of horror, there are some A-list big-time names. Jason, Michael, Freddy. And then there's some B-list names, right? And, and I would suggest that one of the B-list names, and that's not, not C or D, but one of the B-list names is that of Pinhead. How dare you, sir? Uh, <gasps> am I wrong? Am I wrong, though? Hey, hey, like when people hey, say, hey. Name, the, name the horror icons, <laughs> is most people going to name in their first breath Pinhead? I, I think Pinhead is a graduate level horror icon. <laughs> a graduate the level others, horror icon. The others icon. are strictly freshman year. All right, fair enough. No, but again... There has been Pinhead. There's been a lot of talk about a return of Hellraiser lately. And we did hear and we found out that Hulu was going to be doing an original film reboot mm. of Hellraiser. And now we know when it's coming. It's coming October 7th. And they dropped their first little teaser for it. Now, the teaser is, in every sense of the word, a teaser. It's yeah. like 16 seconds. It's just the title Hellraiser with just a quick glimpses of the new pinhead and all that kind of stuff we did get a little bit of a description of the new movie it's a young girl struggling with addiction comes across a box that opens a world of hurt uh, if you will for for lack of a better term so rob mm. listen while hellraiser amongst horror films aficionados like yourself yes is is a revered name i i think it is fair to say that amongst the common movie goers the names of freddie jason and mike these yeah, are all yeah, the ones yeah. coming i was just but kidding do you think that this Hulu, because listen, Hulu just launched another original movie that everybody slept on. The Predator movie, Prey. Yeah. Everybody slept on it. First reactions came out for Prey, saying it was amazing, and people going, I don't trust those first reactions. Oh, turns out the movie was freaking awesome, and everybody loved it. Could this be a follow-up to that, or are you anticipating something lackluster? I don't know. What do you think about it? Well, the thing about what I've always loved about Hellraiser is that it's a literary-based property. 
You know, it's based on Clive Barker's story, The Hellbound Heart. And it, it, there's a lot more going on in the Hellraiser franchise than, say, in the Halloween franchise. And it really is, you know, Pinhead, Pinhead is a character that you have to summon. And opening the lament configuration, the box, that's a choice that you make. And when the Cenobites come for you to tear your soul apart, that's something that you have brought on yourself. And so there's a lot more, I think, going on psychologically in the Hellraiser franchise when it's good. So I'm looking forward to this. I mean, seeing what they did with Prey, I mean, I'm hoping, in my mind, there's the development department over at Hulu is like, we want to go highbrow when we make these. And I'm hoping that the Hellraiser uh, franchise is only as good as its scripts because, John... There have been some bad Hellraiser yep. movies. Yep. Not good ones. True. I, my, I mean, uh, I do have the uh, Blu-ray Scarlet box that Arrow put out that has the first three Hellraiser movies in it. That's but a shame. But after that, uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. After that, it's not so good. Would you be jealous to know that I got to go out and have drinks with Clive Barker? I would be jealous I was, to know that. I was at Comic-Con, and I was helping them. This is going back a bunch of years. I was helping them promote... Uh, a movie that was based on another one of Clive Barker's writings, Midnight Meat Train. Yeah, which I love. Yeah, I I, I quite like Midnight. That Bradley Cooper before he yep. was a big star and all that, that movie's kind of stuff. brutal. Um, and so we were hanging out with the promoters. I was like, "You want to go grab a drink? Yeah." And I got to go and have drinks with Clive Barker. On he, he's a very interesting cat, and and you know his not books, what I was expecting at all. No, he was completely not what his, I was expecting his, at all. His the books of blood. You know, he really changed. Stephen King will tell you he really changed the face of literary horror. Uh, in the in the early mid '80s, and so look, I'm excited for this. I know our friend Connie, you know, she's just yep. started watching all the Hellraiser movies. She loves. She calls them the Hell Priests. Well, so, yeah. I mean, I I uh, I can't wait, dude. I hope this is good. Fingers crossed, Hulu. Don't let me down, Chris. Now look, I know that this is not the street you live on. No, <laughs> I've never visited this street. She lives on Elm Street. You have. I've never been. Any here. plans on watching? Oh, uh, actually, you know what? Let me go back. Have uh, you ever seen the original Hellraiser? No, I don't know this man. You know, it's thirty five years old. It's my age. I'm Hellraiser. about to be the same age as Hellraiser. Thirty five. Wow. That's uh, me. But uh, yeah, so you this might is, like it. I why? can't. No, no. Because well, it, <laughs> it, it has <laughs> more of a it, no. it dark fantasy. It definitely has a more yeah, fantastical like bent to it. Yeah. It's not just jump scares. I don't know if I trust how, you because you John wants him? me to watch The Descent or whatever the hell that horrible thing is. No, but I want is. you to watch it because, because I know it's, it's going to freak the hell okay, out of you. Okay, but no, you it's, think... It's, it's the, my second favorite horror movie of all time. Yeah. But I, I know you're going to freak out. Do you think this is as scary as that? It's not. Okay. It's more of a mind F than... Yeah. than oh, yeah. well, this is already a noodle, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's well. different. All right. It's the Descent, though. Oh, look at him. There he is. Wow. Oh, my goodness. With nipple clamps? Pretty is much. that part of it? That snap yes. is a big part of it. Good for you. Oh, really? Good for you, guy. <laughs> I think she'd notice sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? And it's coming soon, October 7th. Yeah. This thing drops. Could this be the next Prey, or could it be yet another forgettable straight-to-streaming movie that kind of comes and goes? What like do you all guys the other think? Hellraiser movies. Yes, <laughs> like all the other Hellraiser movies. Yeah. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts <laughs> all right guys with that down before we move on to our next off the top we're going to take a second and thank one of the sponsors of today's show maybe chris needs to give him a call after watching hellraiser our friends over at better help we want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of this video better help guys long gone are the days that we could afford to just ignore our emotional and mental health and it's also time that we got over this idea that seeking emotional and mental health is some kind of sign of weakness you know when we want to get more physically healthy we go to the gym and we're proud of that to get our physical bodies healthier and stronger well it's time we gave the same kind of importance to our mental and emotional health and that's where our friends at better help come in BetterHelp is online therapy that offers you video therapy, on the phone, or even live chat only therapy sessions. And I know a lot of people have thought about starting therapy, but they get held up with the idea that it's going to be really expensive. Well, BetterHelp is much more affordable than traditional in-person therapy. So listen guys, it's time for us to start taking our mental health far more seriously. Our listeners of The John Campia Show get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Campia. That's betterhelp.com slash Campia. And thank you to our friends at BetterHelp for providing such a great service and being a sponsor of this episode of the John Campia Show. All right, guys, with that down, let's move into another off the top, and that is this. There are 
in the grand history of Hollywood, there's a great tradition of when one studio puts out a movie about something, another one's got to do it. Whether it's Volcano and Dante's Peak, uh, what was it? White House Down and Olympus Has Fallen. Uh, you've got Armageddon and Deep Impact. Deep Impact. Deep Impact. Well, now we have a couple of Pinocchio things coming out. We also, we got our first glimpse at Guillermo del Toro's, mm. but there's also a live action with Tom Hanks coming out called Pinocchio, and they just dropped their first trailer has just landed online the first live action trailer for pinocchio is now here and i saw this image mm -hmm. and i thought that looks just the still image that visually looks really good i mean that's exactly what i would picture what pinocchio would look like if it was real and in a live action sense so the first trailer comes out i watch it i really liked it now I, i'm not going to say it's one of the better trailers I've seen in the last couple of months, but it was solid. I mean, Tom Hanks is Tom Hanks. He's America's dad. The The voice of Pinocchio is perfect for it. There's an endearing quality to it. You know, when he says, I want to be real, I mean, there's something about that. Oh, and the end, when Geppetto holds his hand and says, you'll always be my real boy. I'm like, oh, okay, that that is touching. Listen, I'm not going to say that I've been jumping up and down with excitement for this film, but the job of a trailer is to take your enthusiasm level and bump it up a couple of notches. And while I am not still dying to see this film, I got to say I'm more interested in watching it now than I was this morning. So I, I liked what I saw. Chris, you had a chance to see mm -hmm. this Pinocchio trailer. What did you think? This did get me more excited because I have been way more team Guillermo del Toro yeah. than this version. And it looks adorable. It does look like a very, very like frame for frame version of the animated film. Right. The foxes look great. Oh my gosh, yeah. Keegan-Michael Key playing the fox yeah. too, which is wonderful. Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt doing Jiminy Cricket is really, really precious too. I think the voice acting is pretty great on this. It all looks lovely. And I mean, look, Look, look at America's dad here. Look at him <laughs> staring at his boy. And we all know that I am a big old softy. So I'm going to sob through this movie because that line of you'll always be my boy. I was like, OK, well, I'm going to just like take a lap. <laughs> I'm good. This looks really, really cute. This picture right here, I like this because he's sitting there, you know, there was a time that I lived in a building of all women and had to dress as one myself. <laughs> that's, I, that's why I say it. this is a pussy, pussy oh, buddies reference. Buddies. So you don't get it. Anyway, Rob, you had a chance to see the trailer. What did you think about I it? I think it looks it looks lovely. It's Robert Zemeckis. Yep. And I, I don't I, trust I mean, him. He's wronged me. Has, Has he, he wronged, wronged you? you? Yes, he did that horrible Christmas Carol. And then he did Polar that Express. And those movies were disgusting and uncanny. <laughs> Yeah, but he, he also made me Contact, which I can watch all day, every day. Well, he made, he's, he's made a oh, lot more on. great than he hasn't. Look, so, yeah. That's Are fair. you a diss on Contact? I love the, yes, I am, but. <laughs> wow. I like Contact. I quit. Just turns out to be your damn dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, and he made Back to the Future 1, 2, and 3. Yeah. Used cars. I know. He wrote 1941. That's fair. He did He did Beowulf, right? Yeah. He yeah, did, I liked man. Beowulf. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think of the trailer? Oh, I like. I, I think it looks great. I mean, I, first of all, I have to say that the original animated Pinocchio is one of my favorite Disney classic cartoons. I love that film. You know, there was when I was a kid growing up. There is a darkness to the story. There, it really is. It and, really, really is. And uh, you know, there was real peril there. And I remember thinking that when I was a kid, I'm like, maybe I shouldn't be watching this. You know, it was the first time you you learned that animation could take you someplace else than other than just Looney Tunes. Dare I say there are horror elements really yeah there are to, to the real pinocchio story yeah. oh absolutely yeah. and i think uh i think it looks great i do wonder will they keep that part of it will that part still be in there like I, i'm getting the feeling that it will yeah I, but it'll be a little bit of a roll of the dice for them to get how much they'll lean into that because you're right there's there's parts in this like i watch as a child i'm like ah like it's a yeah kinda. children being sold off into slavery that calling out to their moms yeah i mean I, I, yeah. after getting obliterated with alcohol and smoking cigars <laughs> yeah all right guys question is for you what do you think did you have a chance to watch the new pinocchio trailer if so what did you think about it jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts all right, guys, with that down, let's now move into our main topics here today, shall we? And how do we select our main topics on the John Campia Show? Well, that's where you guys come in, because you guys come up with our main topics. Whenever you come across a big topic issue or story that you guys feel we need to cover as a main topic here on the show, just go anytime 24-7 over to www.thejohncampiashow.com slash contact. Once you guys get there, you're going to see a form. Fill it out with your topic or question. It's absolutely free. Hit submit, and then maybe... Just maybe you might see your submission featured as a topic here on the John Campia Show. 
With that down, Chris, what is our first main topic today? Our first topic comes from Reese F.I.L. Hi, Campia crew. Been an avid watcher since the AMC days. My question involves that glorious video of Jamie Lee Curtis announcing that Halloween Ends will air in theaters and on Peacock. We have spoken ad nauseum about how this release plan is a bad idea. But I feel like Jamie strongly hinted that there is a reason to see the movie both in theaters and on streaming. Could it be that this movie has alternate endings? Yeah, Ugh. I know I'm probably speculating too much, but wouldn't that be an ingenious move to promote ticket sales and subscriptions? Thanks and bring on the filthy. All right, thanks a lot for sending this in. Now, of course, I think it was 2018 when uh, the first of this iteration of Halloween came out, hmm. which is meant to be a direct sequel to the original Halloween. I have never been a fan of the franchise. Those of you guys who are regular viewers know this. But I loved that 2018 movie. I was so surprised. I went in there totally ready not to like it. And it completely surprised me. I absolutely loved it. Ate it up. Very excited for the sequel, Halloween Kills. And then they did that stupid thing <laughs> where they put Halloween Kills uh, on straight to video, uh, straight to Peacock. And they released it day and date in Peacock and in theaters. A, a move that cost them untold untold amounts of money just a crazy amount of money that it costs them here's a little bit of an example uh, of this and the money that they cost when you go in and you look at let me see where did it go i lost a bit oh yeah here we go okay so halloween the 2018 movie made 255 million dollars on i believe a 20 million dollar budget and people ate it up it had a Rotten Tomatoes critic rating of almost 80%, 79 point something percent. People liked it. People went out to see it. They went out to support it. They went to watch it, made the money glorious. Now, when a first film like that comes out and it goes over great with the audience and the critics and it does well, you can expect an uptick going into the second one. Except that they realized that the second one was terrible. And it was. I mean, it's all subjective. You may have loved the sequel. And if you did, that's awesome. But for me, someone who loved that first, the second one was terrible. And so they dumped it on streaming and they did the day and date and they lost over $124 million by doing it. Because whereas the first Halloween made $255 million, the second one made $131. Despite the fact that the first film was so well received and so well regarded that should have, that goodwill would have probably could have parlayed into a bigger box office, but instead they left over a hundred and twenty million dollars on the table that they poof gone because they want to do this idiotic day and date releasing moronic stupid move and they get and they paid the price for it. and maybe of course the, like the money, critic John. rating for this maybe they just you know some people don't like money you know more money more problems right we want less problems so they said let's just put this thing on day and date and it also suffered because, I mean, the, and again, we were right when we saw, I bet you this movie sucks, that's why they're doing it. Turns out it's true. The rating went from almost 80% down to 30%. So that's not good. So now we're coming into Halloween ends and we're like, okay, straight to theater. Come on, show some confidence, show some, you know, guts. Nope. They come out and announce that Halloween ends is going to go straight to streaming again as, as with their moronic day and date release. This comes to us from the folks over at Screen Rant who write the following. Halloween Ends, which comes to theaters on October 14th, will take place four years after the events of Halloween and its 2021 sequel, Halloween Kills, both of which take place on Halloween night in 2018. The plot will follow Laurie Strode, Jamie Lee Curtis, of course, the immortal Jamie Lee Curtis, as she works on her memoir and whose life is thrown back into chaos when her granddaughter, Allison, played by uh, Andy Matchit. I don't know how to pronounce it. A uh, new boyfriend, Corey Cunningham, played by Rohan Campbell, is accused of killing a child he was babysitting. I bet it wasn't him that killed the child. <laughs> I bet I know who killed the child. Anyway, that can, again comes to us from the folks at Screen Rant. Um, listen, because I love the first one so much, I've been looking forward to this, what they're calling the final installment, Halloween Ends. But I'm not going to lie to you. The fact that they're going with this day and date thing again that number that just screams to me yeah they know this movie's bad or at least that's what the image they're giving they are projecting the image that they don't believe in this movie and we saw what happened last time they're going to pay, pay the financial price for it again so i mean as much as i you know earlier i was just singing the praises of peacock i i mean i i really do like peacock hell they're one of the sponsors of our show they pay us money thank you peacock but this move 
I got to be honest. This is a terrible move, bad move. I don't know what they're thinking other than the fact that they must feel the movie is terrible. That's the only thing I have to go on. So I don't know, Rob, you hear about this. Uh, I, I, how did you feel about the first two movies and what do you think about this particular move right now? Well, Halloween was the very first piece of physical media I ever owned. I got it for my 13th birthday. I got a VHS copy of Halloween. I've seen it a hundred times. Um, I showed it to all the girls in my neighborhood that were not supposed to see it. My parents would get calls about it. <laughs> Your son showed my daughter an R-rated movie. But I didn't like Halloween 2018. I thought it was okay. Oh, I love it. Halloween <laughs> Kills I didn't like at all. Yeah, me neither. But here's the thing. I like the franchise. I can't not like it. I want it to succeed. I do not understand with what we saw happen at Warner Brothers day and date releasing is only detrimental to films, even if they're bad. I can't imagine that this is a good move. It's Blumhouse too. You'd think that they would be like, nope, you have to release our movie. And they have enough clout that they should be able to release their films in theaters. I don't understand. I really don't understand the financial. We've seen that day and date doesn't work. You lose money. I mean, I guess it works for Peacock, I guess. But how much money might this movie make and how much does it undercut the box office of opening weekend? I don't I don't understand the strategy at all. I don't. Chris, what do you think about it? Well, going back to what our viewer initially wrote in here too, that idea of alternate endings, we're going to talk about a movie that tried to do that in a little bit here. Clue. How did that work out for them? That made audiences so confused and angry and just perplexed. So I don't think we're getting alternate endings with the idea of same day and uh, streaming and release. Also, I'm so confused because... We saw Jamie Lee Curtis come to CinemaCon and show us some footage of this film and just like own that stage and let yeah. us know that Laurie is back. And even as somebody who is not a big horror fan, I know the importance of that iconic final girl, Laurie. I know that. So it really bums me out that this film, oh, hi, Judy Greer. Oh, you're in this? Okay, I might actually watch this. I love you. Um, I, I don't understand <laughs> She's why. She's not in the new one. She was oh. in the last one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, well. Hi, Judy. <laughs> um, I don't understand why you would do this because it just seems like such a clear indicator that you don't believe in your film and you don't think it's good. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, and that's the thing that too, because you go back to that at CinemaCon, the, I mean, how great of a moment it was that and Jamie Lee Curtis came out on stage. She was amazing. Like, oh, we're in her presence. Oh my gosh. Amazing. And they talked about the film and, and all this kind of stuff. That clearly... It was at the time, the plan was for this to just be a theatrical release. Somewhere between then and now, they changed their minds. If, see, there's an argument to be made if it was always the plan. Like say, we're, we're gonna use this final film even before they started shooting. And they said, the plan has always been that we're gonna make this, we're gonna use this as a membership parlay to try to get new people to sign up for the streaming service and all that kind of stuff. If you had said that from the beginning, then there's an argument to be made there. But the fact that they did plan on this being an exclusive to theatrical, and then once it got all finished and the boat put on, they looked at it and go, huh, um, yeah, so about that, we're now gonna make it day and date, theaters and Peacock. That does not screen confidence. Again, I, I think you give it a little bit more of a pass if they said right from the beginning, that's what this is going to be. That's the plan. But they clearly changed their plan. I mean, I don't understand, John, if the idea is to put movies on streaming to to generate subscriptions. Right. Which, why which would, is a valid strategy. Valid strategy. But why would you put a substandard movie on and expect it to generate subscriptions? Do you think people are going to sign up to watch a movie that has bad reviews? Well, what have we always... Here, here's, here's what it is. What have we always said? If you want a movie to generate excitement on your streaming channel, right? You give it a theatrical release. Yeah. You mm -hmm. get that positive word of mouth. You get that buzz. You get that people excited. And you make that money. And then you put it on your streaming service. And it'll have a bigger launch on your streaming service than, than otherwise. I completely agree. However, if the movie's not good and you put it in theaters first and everybody hates it, then there's zero excitement when you say, now it's on our streaming service. Yeah. So that seems to be the strategy, I think think i mean i could be dead wrong about that i don't know but but if it's a bad film you're not going to get a lot of subscribers anyway either way but you might you might 
get a f- trick a few people into signing up when there hasn't when no one's seen it yet and say okay i'll sign up for peacock to watch this movie that nobody's told me is terrible yet so i don't know look listen i haven't seen the movie let me be clear maybe this movie is awesome i because like how many times have i thought a movie or show looked bad and then i sat down and watch and go wow i really like that hopefully that's what's going to happen here so We'll see what happens. This this is just us guessing and speculating. And it could be the Top Gun Maverick of the Halloween could franchise. Be the Harley Quinn of the Halloween franchise. Ooh. Who knows? I'm open to that. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about that? What's your thoughts on it? Jump down to the comment section below and leave those thoughts there. All right, guys. With that down, let's move on to main topic number two actually no before we move on to main topic number two we're going to take a second here and thank another sponsor of today's shows they're keeping my ass real comfy right now i'm sure you wanted to know that better our health? friends <laughs> not at better health <laughs> but me undies <laughs> We want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of this video, Me Undies. Now, guys, we've all heard of gut instinct, but have you ever heard of butt instinct? It's when your butt tells you it wants new undies. Listen to your butt. Luckily for you, we work with Me Undies, makers of the most buttery, soft, and sustainable undies, bralettes, and socks that exist. Guys, for too long, I lived my life wearing those Amazon or Walmart 20 pack cheap underwear that I thought were just fine until I tried Me Undies undies. Now it's like my nether regions are in a Palm Springs resort. So guys, let your skin sing a song of joy with undies, socks, and bralettes that feel as if they're spun from silken clouds. Guaranteed to be the softest stuff you've ever felt in your life, their signature micromodal fabric is sustainable, breathable, and stretchy as heck. Available in sizes extra small to 4XL, they have new colors and prints dropping weekly, so there's always something exciting to check out. Try out their free-to-join membership for free shipping on every order and exclusive perks, like an item shipped to your door every month, secret sales, and early access to their newest stuff. MeUndies has a great offer for all John Campy Show viewers and listeners. For any first-time purchaser, you get 20% off, plus free shipping and returns. To get 20% off your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash Campia. That's MeUndies.com slash Campia. <laughs> Thank you to our friends and MeUndies for sponsoring this episode of the Sean Campy Show. Thank you, Chris. No problem. <laughs> uh, with that down, guys, let's move on to main topic number two. Chris, what is our second main topic today? This one comes from Box Office Fan. Looks like Kong will be heading to the small screen as a live action TV show that's in the works. But it's not HBO Max it's going to, it's going to Disney Plus. The show will be a prequel to the films. What do you think of a Kong show and are you surprised it's going to Disney Plus and not HBO Max? Yeah, so this kind of dropped, as we were doing open mic yesterday, actually, mm-hmm. this kind of came out and I have seen all over, a lot of confusion. A lot of people writing saying, wait a minute, I, did Universal or Warner Brothers lose the rights? To the monster verse, does that mean this? What about that show that's coming to Apple Plus with Kurt Russell and his kid? And what what's going on here? All valid, valid questions. All right, this comes to us from the folks over at Variety who write the following. A live action series about the or- origin of King Kong is in early development at Disney Plus, Variety has confirmed. The series would be a serialized drama that would explore Kong's origins as well as the mysteries of his home, Skull Island. The series would be based on the original King Kong, written by Marion C. Cooper, as well as new novelizations by artist Joe DeVito, produced in conjunction with Cooper's estate. Stephanie Folsom, who recently developed the Amazon series Paper Girls for television, will write and executive produce. That's got Anne excited because she likes that show. Will write and executive produce The King Kong Show. Uh, James Wan, Michael Clear, and Robert Hackett will also executive produce on behalf of Atomic Monster. So... Number one, this King Kong series that will be on Disney Plus is in no way connected to the MonsterVerse stuff we've got on, going on with Warner Brothers, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, all that kind of, This is completely disassociated. No, Warner Brothers has not lost the rights to it because this is based on the original books. And that's a different set of rights. It's kind of like how Amazon has a Lord of the Rings series going right now, but that Swedish video game company just bought all the rights to the other other parts of rights of Lord of the Rings, right? So they are able to do this. It's completely disconnected. You got the executive producer of Paper Girls on there. That's got Annex. I haven't watched Paper Girls yet myself, but I heard it's good. Obviously, you got James Wan attached to it. 
That's always good. Now, how involved or not involved he'll actually be, or will he just be one of these producers and name only? I, I don't know. But if he does get involved in any way, shape, or form, that's a positive as well. So I, and again, going back to the whole thing of there's always people doing the same thing. Got two Pinocchios, got a bunch of King Kongs coming. Rob, you heard about this. You know, somebody asks you, how can they be making one while somebody else, how would you describe it to people? Well, I mean, you know, you know the rights issues are rights issues. So right. you can always do, just like uh, James Bond, the James Bond novels are in the public domain in Canada. You know, you could make probably a Canadian TV series. I mean, you probably get fought, they push back the Broccoli family, Eon Productions, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, you, you can do that. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not something that's shocking. Like Sherlock Holmes, for instance, is in the public domain. So you could do Enola Holmes. You could do a Sherlock Holmes as Robert Downey as Jr. As long as you don't take any elements that the other iterations created for, that's, their, that's for right. their shows. That's right. right. Like you could make a Thor movie, which you couldn't. Yeah. You couldn't have anything to do with Marvel's No, nope. anything that has to do with the original Thor mythology, you and I can make a, mo a Thor movie tomorrow if we want In to. the next season of Sandman, we will be seeing Thor, Loki, and Odin, theoretically. I didn't know that. Yes, we will. It, but they're iterations of Thor, Loki, and Odin. But so, you know, it, this does perplex me because Kong's just on Skull Island. Are we going to watch Kong romancing a, another ape? Is he going to just be fighting Tyrannosaurus Rex? First Rexes? love. Everybody has first I, love. You know, I, I just, I, I mean, to me, Godzilla versus Kong 2, I want to see that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like King Kong, but, you know, a period piece set in the 30s, and I don't know where you, what, do they borrow Kong from Skull Island, take him on vacation somewhere? You know, maybe, maybe I don't know, fighting samurais or ninjas. That'd be cool. That'd be cute. Edgar in the chat here was like, over under that this is a coming of age story that has comedic notes. <laughs> Like, oh, Kong finds himself. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Kong Mom, I want to be an artist. <laughs> yeah. no. That actually. Could I know be you want funny. me to stay on Skull Island, but I got to go somewhere else to find me. There's no bananas in art. <laughs> uh, yeah, you excited about this, Chris? I mean, I, I know that you don't have to pick between the two. It's like a Stones Beatles situation, but I'm more of a Godzilla girl. So it's just, oh, King Kong. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'll definitely check it out, but am I super jazzed about it? And you know, the King Kong story, I like King Kong in, in there was a there was Toho monster movies with King Kong before, mm -hmm. Japanese versions. But the American King Kong story is really that Beauty and the Beast tale. Yeah. You know, and, and then and then the tragedy of King Kong. And I don't know, do you make him a hero? That kind of Well, they already kind of have in the other movies, yeah. right? These other movies, King Kong is a hero, but but you you just touched on something that I wanted to bring up. When you look at the original King Kong story, there's an underlying analogy of, of what happens when man messes with the natural world. Yes. And tragedy ensues. Yes. And and that's kind of the visual representation. The, the lesson we like at the end when he falls off the building and he, he's dead at the end, it, there's, there's, it, it's representative of a lot. But like, yeah, you look at Godzilla versus Kong, they make Kong a hero. And like, are they... Does he become a friend of the natives on that on Skull Island? <laughs> right. Does is he every week fighting off the newest monster that comes each week to destroy the island and he fights them off bravely every time? I mean, is it gonna be Power Rangers but on Skull Island? Is that what it's oh gonna be? Oh my gosh, take my money right now. I would love that. <laughs> King Kong is just like punching putties. Yes. Maybe oh. maybe predators come to Skull Island and take their uh take their shot. How, I, dare. I, how cool would it be if a predator tried to hunt Kong? Uh, I'd be pretty sure. I would love that. And so the Predators come with their advanced technology with five giant lions. Follow me here. What if these alien technology come and they, they bring with them five giant lions, but it's not quite enough to take down Kong. So what they do is, because they're so smart, they combine the lions into one giant Kong and fighting robot. And Predator yells, and I'll form the head. I, by the way, this is all totally original. This is completely <laughs> it's original. It's never been done before. Nobody copied this from me. This is my idea. I think that would, I think you got a winner right there. I'd watch it. <laughs> I would too. I'm not going to kid myself. <laughs> all right, guys. Question is for you. What do you think about this idea of the fact that we're going to get another completely separate King Kong going at the same time as the other stuff that's not associated with the Warner Brothers stuff at all? But it does have like the Paper Girls executive producer. It's got James Wan attached to it. I don't know. Is this something that catches your interest? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there. All right, guys. With that down... 
Let's move on to main topic number three. Chris, what is our third main topic today? This one comes from Darren G. Hey, John and team. I don't know about you, but I had completely forgotten about that Ryan Reynolds Clue movie they announced years ago. Me too. It, they announced it when I first got hired by you. That's Yeah, It was one of the first stories ago. we covered. Then out of nowhere, I read today that the project is moving forward and they added a new writer, Oren Uzel, who I guess also write the, wrote The Lost City and 22 Jump Street. Are you surprised this is still happening? And what do you think about the writer choice? Thanks. Darren, my friend, you are not alone. <laughs> I had totally forgotten about this, which is weird because when they first announced it, th there was a moment of, they're making what? <laughs> Another clue? But it was Ryan Reynolds, who's of course, everybody knows my favorite movie star. And you had Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick, who were the writers behind Deadpool and a million other things now. These guys have become super busy in the business. And it's like, all right, all right. I know Ann got real excited. Corey got really excited. A bunch of people got super excited about it. And then, wait, wasn't at one point, who was the lead guy again? Uh, he's, he stars in o Ozark. Jason Bateman. Jason Bateman. Wasn't Jason Bateman supposed to direct mm -hmm. it at one point? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I oh. think I remember that. I thought, I thought at one point Jason Bateman was supposed to direct it. Uh, that That isn't happening now, if I'm even remembering that right. But it, you're right. It completely fell off the radar. Totally forgot about this project. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere... Clue things are starting to trend in my news feeds. And sure enough, it's moving forward. They are moving forward, this thing. This thing comes to us from the folks over at Deadline who write the following. Oren Uzel is co the co-screenwriter of Paramount's spring hit, The Lost City, which, by the way, I enjoyed The Lost City. I thought that was pretty fun. Is giving 20th Century Studios' Clue movie a big reworking. The first draft of the Ryan Reynolds movie, based on Hasbro's popular whodunit game, was written by Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick. James Bobbin is attached to direct the live-action pick, which hails from 20th Century E, uh, E1 and Reynolds' company Maximum Effort Productions. So they had a script. I guess they decided it needed a reworking. I th my guess is Reese and Wernick are probably super busy. I think they've got like eight projects on the go right now. And I don't mind the idea of the dude who wrote 22 Jump Street coming in to do it. Uh, so I'm totally good with this. Listen, all I know is that while I am not the biggest Clue fan in the world, um, either the game or the movie, the original movie, I like it, don't get me wrong. Uh, Anne owns, how many, Ray? Like nine versions of the Clue board game. <laughs> like she's queen. got Golden Girls Clue, Hell yes. Supernatural Clue, Harry like Potter Clue. Clue. <sighs> I mean, just got like everything. Everything, every version of the Clue board game she has. Um, Except... Except. Bob's Burgers. Is which... there a Bob's Burgers? Yes, yeah, come on, is. Ann. Why don't you, you have buy... South Park? There's, I think they made is a, South, a Park. South Park. No, no, no. South Park's Monopoly. Oh, and the Office. Ann's got the yeah. Office yeah, the version office of one Clue Bob's as Burgers, well. though, I saw at City Walk the other day. So oh, you, you could swoop it in and get that. And well, see, there you go. Why don't you do it? You're her brother. <laughs> Why don't you be sweet, Ray? Never mind. So here's the thing, though. I just remember that when they announced it, a lot more people got excited than I anticipated. Like, I, I was really quite surprised by the amount of reactions I started seeing from our own audience and, and around the web. People got excited. So this is pretty interesting, Chris. This Clue movie's moving forward. You mm -hmm. got you excited about it? I'm not. <laughs> but that's okay. So Clue is one of my favorite movies of all time. My parents showed it to me as a kid, and I remember seeing Madeline Kahn do Flames on the side of my face. <laughs> and in that moment is when I went, oh, that, that's what I want to do. I want to be her. And I became obsessed with Madeline Kahn. And then I watched all of Mel Brooks's movies at a very young age, which is probably why I say so many foul things. Um, so I love this movie so much. It is very, very near and dear to my heart. And that's the version I like to watch. Is the remake going to take anything away from that? No. Could it potentially be even better? Maybe. But it is one of those things of, I like this how it is, and I don't really need you to touch it, but it's Ryan Reynolds. And I trust Ryan, and I trust his comedic sensibilities, and I really like all the stuff that Maximum Effort is doing. So maybe I will be pleasantly surprised, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Rob, what about you? Well, you know, the thing about Clue is it's, it's an opportunity for actors to really jump into a meaty character role. You know, and you can populate a movie with all of these great actors playing these funny, you know, Professor Plum. And and uh, Tim Curry's in the original. Oh, right? yeah. yes. Oh, yes. He's great. You know, I mean, you, you and I love Tim Curry. And what's not to love about that? Although I would say this. I mean, is it what is it after party? Mm -hmm. Okay. There, only murders left in the, bu only oh, in the oh, building. Only burnings in the building. There's so many shows now and so many other things, even even to a certain extent, uh, Knives Out. 
Yeah. You know, Knives Out's a clue. And, and I think that there's been a lot of, the script would have to be really great mm -hmm. for them to make something I think that would excite, there you go, there's Tim Curry, oh. that would Hi, excite babe. people. And I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm just saying this is, to me, if I was a screenwriter, I would think this is a daunting task because you better write one hell of a great script. For sure. Because you've already got Ryan Reynolds, who is hilarious. I could see him in this. He'd probably be great. And then you've got to surround him with a, a great ensemble group of actors, and they need a great script. This will live and die based on that screenplay, and that's got to be It's tall order, John, but you know what? It could be really good. I know, but let's not forget, too. This ain't Shakespeare. I mean, and, and it's not even like one of the great Agatha Christie who done it. Or not. I mean, this is kind. This is a schlock kind of comedy done very well and yeah. beloved by millions. It's a lot of puns. It's a lot of physical comedy. Right? Would I absolutely murder someone to be the singing telegram girl? <gasps> absolutely. <laughs> but, but that was that was a very specific iteration. I don't think they necessarily are remaking that movie. that version. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't They're know. They're probably going to do their own thing, but we'll we'll see. But you're right. I mean, but still, it has to be funny. Mm -hmm. But you, know, you watch the sensibilities again. I'll go to Deadpool on this because Rhett Reese, Paul Wernick, yeah, Ryan Reynolds together, right? That's what made me go, okay. You bring that kind of sensibility, that type of uh, of humor tinge that you had in your Deadpool films to something like a property like Clue. You could have something really, really good. The other thing to keep in mind too is this: is that while we are waxing poetic about Clue, I will venture to guess 50% of our audience or more has probably never seen it because this is an older film. Mm -hmm. Actually, Ray, can you, what year it did came it out? It came out in 1985. 85. Mm -hmm. So, I mean. And it I, didn't do well in theaters because they did the alternate endings where yeah. you got, they yeah, wanted people to go see different idea. versions of it. And so you'd see a movie and be like, wait, that's how it ends. And then someone else would be like, no, it's not. And yeah. they thought it would get people to keep going back and seeing it. And it, they should have played it how it plays now, where you just see all the endings. Yeah, yeah, because that's so fun. Yeah. I hate alternate endings in movies, I, especially with mystery movies. It's because it's like so. It either was one thing or not. So I don't know. It's it's interesting, but it looks like this thing's back on course, guys. Question is for you: Are you excited for Ryan Reynolds's Clue? They brought on a new screenwriter again. He did Twenty Two Jump Street and Lost City, so I'm good with that. What do you guys think? Whatever your thoughts are, jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there. All right, guys, before we move on to our final two main topics today, we're gonna to take another second to thank another sponsor of today's episode, our friends that we love over at Masterclass. Guys, we wanna take a second and thank the sponsor of this video, Masterclass. All of us here at the John Campia Show absolutely love Masterclass. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds, anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn television writing from Shonda Rhimes, improve your comedy skills from Steve Martin, or you can learn filmmaking from James Cameron himself. With over a hundred different classes from a range of world-class and instructors, that thing you've always wanted to learn is closer than you think. I have personally watched Bob Iger's lessons on business strategy and leadership at least six or seven times. Every time I watch it, I learn something new that I get to apply to my own business as well. And the best thing about it is you don't have to sit down and watch an entire thing all at once. You can watch the individual segments or just as much as you want in any sitting at a time. So guys, when it comes to Masterclass, I highly recommend that you check it out. Get unlimited access to every Every masterclass. And as a John Campia Show listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash campia. That's masterclass.com slash campia for 15% off masterclass. And a big special thank you to our friends at Masterclass. Sorry, I was hung up on Kong in 60 seconds. We're sponsoring <laughs> this episode of the John Campia Show. All right, guys, with that down, Let's move on to main topic number four. Chris, what is our fourth main topic today? Our fourth topic comes from, oops, I gotta scroll, I'm so sorry. Uh, Daniel Yamasaki. Hi, John and crew. I'm not a fan of the original Top Gun film, what? but I couldn't resist hearing the outgoing enthusiasm that revolved around Top Gun Maverick. I can honestly say that this is my favorite movie of the year by far. Yes. So I was wondering, is there any news at all about a sequel? Considering its high critic reviews and how much it made at the box office, thanks and keep up the great work. All right, thanks a lot for saying this in, Daniel. So obviously when you have a movie that has like shattered so many different box office records and just like kept, and not just making money, it's won the trifecta. It made box office, the audiences loved it, the critics loved it. I mean, it just swept all three, it got the hat trick. 
This movie was it. It was, that was it. No more Top Gun. The whole plan going into it was this was Maverick's swan song. I mean, hell, at the end, he literally flies off into the sunset at the end of this movie. It, that was it. It's a swan song. You know, drones are going to be taking over. This was the last hurrah of the pilot age. And that was it. They were going to be done. However, the movie ended up grossing over $1.3 billion. Might hit 1.4. Maybe it already has at this point. It has been beloved. It has had incredible legs. People love it. And just like the Joker movie that was always intended to be a one shot and nothing more, when you win an Academy Award nominated for Best Picture and make over a billion dollars, plans can change. However, at this point, we haven't heard anything coming out of the studios, the filmmakers, Tom Cruise himself about having any plans to do another Top Gun. Well, the director of the film was actually directly asked about it. Joseph Kaczynski, they straight up asked him, What's, can we move forward with Top Gun, with Tom Cruise, without Tom Cruise? Can another one happen? And this was Kaczynski said. He said the following. Boy, I don't know. I approached it as Maverick's rite of passage being the fundamental core of the film. But who knows how it'll be interpreted in the future. I mean, we're all just so relieved and grateful that we got this one out the door. Because remember, this thing almost didn't happen. And then when it did happen, it almost just got dumped on streaming. Uh, we're just happy to get this thing out the door. After so much work, we're obviously enjoying being out there and playing, for, at, it being out there and playing for people. We're not really... At least I'm not really thinking about the next one. I'm just enjoying this experience. It was a very special uh, confluence of the right group of people in the right story at the right time. And that comes to us from Joseph Kaczynski. And by the way, the producer of the film, um, Jerry Bruckheimer. Bruckheimer, he basically said the same thing. It's, look, we're just glad this thing's out and we're glad we're doing it. I right now still believe, despite the potential Oscar buzz it may get, despite the $1.3, $1.4 billion it has made, I still don't think there's going to be another one. For a couple of reasons. One, I absolutely believe you cannot do another one without Tom Cruise. I, I think it's folly to think you can do another one without Tom Cruise. I don't care how good looking what's his name is. You just had him on screen there. I, I can't remember. Glenn Powell? Glenn Powell. Is that Powell. him? I don't care how charming and delightful and good looking Glenn Powell is. I don't think he you is. can make one without Tom Cruise. It's got to have Cruise. It took them 20 plus years to get this movie made. Literally. It took them that long to get this thing made. And then they actually went into production on it five and a half years ago. It was four years ago at Comic-Con that they dropped the first trailer for it. And then and a lot of this had nothing to do with them, not their fault. The, the, the pandemic hit and all this and all the trials and tribulation, the turmoil to get that thing made. And they finally got it done. The reality is Tom Cruise is now 60. And he's got two big Mission Impossible movies that he's working on right now. He's got this outer space movie that he's working on right now that's going to be shooting in space. He's got, by the time Tom Cruise gets around to doing this film, if they wanted to do another one, he's going to be 64, 65. And I, again, to me, I think Tom, Tom Cruise clearly doesn't need the money. And I can't imagine the studio does it without him. So listen, when your film makes a billion dollars, it is never an impossibility that they could come back. Just look at Joker. But I'm right now going to guess they don't do another Top Gun. That's my guess. I wouldn't put money on it, but that's my guess. Rob, what do you think? Is it time? Do they need to come back and do another one? Or can, can they do it maybe without Tom Cruise? Okay, instead of Top Gun Maverick, Top Gun Penny Benjamin. The whole thing's about Jennifer Connelly's character getting the bar. <laughs> you know, and you make it like a Coyote Ugly thing. And it's, bar. it stays on the ground. Top bar. It's, it's, and that's, there's, it's cocktail meets Top Gun. Da, na, you know, na, and, na, uh, uh, I'm bar. telling you. And, and it doesn't have to make a billion. You know, you, one location in San Diego, you said there, I mean, it'd make at least 100 million. People, I'd go to see Jennifer Connelly run a bar. But no, <laughs> to be honest, that's my that's my pitch. Penny, but Top Gun, Penny Benjamin. Um, you'll fly over her tower or something. You know, Buzz her great. tower. Buzz her tower. Yeah, Buzz her tower. But I, John, I'm with you. I, I, I just don't get see it drinks, alcohol, buzz. Yeah. Get it? <laughs> uh, uh. I, I, uh, I just don't see them making a sequel to this film. I mean, this was also a very difficult film to make. Oh, hugely and, difficult and, to and make. I, I just don't see like, yeah, you could bring the pilots back and go on another mission, but the whole, I think, part of the appeal of this film 
was the fact that it, there was 36 years between the movies. Um, and bringing Tom Cruise back, I mean, if anything, this movie is as much about Tom Cruise as a performer, as a movie star, as a, a pop icon, as anything else. So uh, that's part of what 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 the the nostalgia fuel that fueled this movie, not unlike the jet fuel that fueled the planes. I mean, I think that this is a once in a lifetime occurrence, and I don't think it could be duplicated. I mean, you know what I could see happen though. I could see them doing a series, a TV series about recruits, like a Top, Top Gun. Gun Bob. Top Gun Bob, why not? <laughs> but no, you know, those characters, it, it might be interesting because those characters are great. Like, I would hang out with those people. And I could see them doing something like that, a spin off show. Top Gun Origins Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm there. I'm down for it. I don't know. Chris, wait, wait. So, two questions. One, can you do another one? Because I, I just put forward all these reasons why I don't think Tom Cruise would do it. But mm -hmm. could you do another one without Tom Cruise at all? And do you think ultimately they'll do another one with or without Cruise? You could, but will it have the same impact? And we did have a really great young cast of characters here. I do think if you explore them in a television format, that would be more effective than a film. I could be wrong on this, though. I wasn't the target demographic for this. You know, I was like, this is a good film. It went on my way. Um, it's no surprise people are talking about a sequel, though, because it did make so much money. And it's so good. It's it's a really well-done film that so many people love. But, I mean, Ray put this in the chat. Yeah. He loved this movie and wants this to be the end of the story because he's going to watch this movie forever. Yeah. Like, I, I love mean, that. Put it on Paramount Plus, finally, after it's done. Yeah. And I'll watch it like how many... You don't know how many times I'm planning on watching this when it goes on streaming because I still have Paramount Plus. I I still have it. Do you have Paramount Plus? I have or it. Or do I have Paramount uh, no, Plus that is one, on your TV? I'll claim this Whoa, one. that's for love. You have Paramount Plus, not <laughs> Ampia Plus. Cancel it. So put I it on there. Right. It. <laughs> you know, you know something else, John. This movie is also about sort of the end of the dog fighting era. See, that yeah. that's that's one of the mm -hmm. big things too. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, th that whole way of life is ending. The, and the that whole was opening definitely... speech from uh uh uh, why am I forgetting the actor's name who plays uh, uh, Ed, Ed Harris? Ed Harris. When Harris says like this this era is over, mm -hmm. yeah, it's saying like, okay, but not yet today. Like not today, it's over. But Ironically, then... there are dog fights happening like currently right now. <laughs> yeah, so but I mean, so it's not that over. <laughs> yeah, but I, <laughs> it's I, true. I, I, I don't know. But listen, even if they wanted to, when could they do it? Like you look up Tom Cruise's schedule right yeah. now. Like when can, and and I I solely believe like I see some people in live chat saying do a spinoff. I don't see I don't see the general audience being interested in a spinoff without Tom Cruise. No, it's so it's so Tom Cruise centric. Unless you do a TV show, I could see it like a like a procedural show except with flyers. Yeah, like yeah, Jag or part something. of the book. yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. part and of by the, the way, man, if this if a Top Gun sequel would prevent me from getting my Les Grossman movie. <laughs> I don't yeah, want that, that to happen. I want, less Grossman. I want less Grossman. Come on. Okay, what about, okay, so obviously you can't do Top Gun Iceman. What about Top Gun Slider? Slider. Mm, slider. You stink. <laughs> what what about Slider? What if you know the what? movie of Les Where Grossman is slider now? trying to get Top Gun 2 made? Well, that's, yeah, so you do, um, uh, what was it called? The, not the producer. The, the offer. The offer, but for Top Gun. The, the guy who played Slider. Rick Rossovich. Is that his name? Yeah. The only other thing I know that he did was he did Steve Martin's Roxanne with Daryl Hannah and oh, right. Steve Martin, the, the Cyrano de Bergerac kind of story. That's the only other thing I ever remember him being in. He was in Top Gun. He was in Roxanne, which is a top 20 favorite comedy of mine of all time. But I don't really remember him from anything else. So what are you getting at, John? Get I'm telling you, Top Gun Slider. <laughs> but wouldn't Let's Slider be like 70? Yeah. yeah. But so is Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but Tom Cruise is still climbing on top of biplanes, being yeah, like, what's up, guys? This is yeah. Tuesday. Slider's like, a, he's a, he, he was probably killed in combat. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. I have a question. How ex expensive was this movie to make? And how much? Oh, yeah, because was, if you was, do a series and you go no, by you, the same no, no, rules, you, you can't. You're not going to get 800 hours of in, yeah, see, in that's fighter what I'm jet footage, and they had to with pay for that. TV. Yeah, maybe and, that's why they filmed so much of it, so they could just bank it and then use it forever. You know, it's like what they it's did the with the story it. blocks of <laughs> movies. <laughs> it's Power Rangers, right? Yeah, they shot like 30 or 40. What are the Ghiblis? What do they call it? Putties. The putties. Mm -hmm. Like they that's shot like great putty 40 or 50 shots of that, and then they use those 40 or 50 shots over and over like over and over and over again. I mean, it's 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 amazing. Internet clip that, please. Oh, that's right. <laughs> One more time. There we go. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
That, <laughs> that is already <laughs> memed. Thank you. So anyway, guys, questions for you. What do you think about this? It doesn't sound like the filmmakers are putting a lot of thought into the idea of doing another one. It sounds like they're maybe resigned that this is it. But hey, listen, when a film makes a billion dollars, and heaven forbid if it does get nominated for Best Picture, I'm not saying it will, but if it does, it's going to re-spark these conversations. Do you think there's going to be another Top Gun? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and leave those thoughts there. All right, guys. With that down, let's move into our fifth and final main topic today. Chris. What is our fifth main topic today? This is from Armand Wren. My brother saw the first two episodes of the new Lord of the Rings show, Rings of Power, and completely loved it. Saw that all the first reviews are out now, and they sound just as good, calling it magnificent and redefining what television can be. And Tolkien fans will be thrilled. And stuff like that. I know you've been really looking forward to the show, so what do you think about the early reviews coming out? Thanks. All right, Armand, thanks a lot for saying that in. And yeah, everybody knows that ever since they announced this show, four or five years ago, I can't remember how long ago it was. This has been my number one most anticipated thing coming to television. Been very, very excited about it. I've really liked the trailers with the exception of the trailer they dropped yesterday. I, I love the footage in it. I just didn't think it was a very good, well, I didn't think it was a well put together trailer, but that being as, as it is, very, very excited about this show. Uh, super stoked to see what's coming. I actually got a call from a friend of mine yesterday who actually, who did, was one of the people that watched it. And they know I'm very excited about it. And they said to me, John, you are going to lose your shit, is what they said to me. Now, the one warning they gave me was they said, you got to understand, keep in mind, there's a, this is a Tolkien world. There's a lot of world building to do. And so the, there's while the, all the main stories there, it's, you might find it a little bit slow. That's the one warning he gave me. You might find the first two episodes a little bit slow, but it's all world building they're doing. It's incredible. So I said, all right, all right. Well, my friend wasn't the only one because uh, the first reviews and reactions for it, the review embargo lifted for it or the reaction embargo and lifted for it. And I hunted, Rob, I hunted to try to find a negative one. Mm. Not one. Not one negative one. That's good. Um, and they all actually sound pretty good. So let's take a second here and go through a bunch of the reactions and, and the things that people drop. So the big outlet, The Wrap, wrote the following. The Rings of Power's gigantic scope and ambition are unveiled on TV, are unrivaled on TV. But I'm very encouraged with the first two Rings of Power episodes overall. Each pocket of civil civilization they visit puts forth a new perspective and mythical culture wonders. Straightforward plot mixed with starry eyes. Uh, Critics' Choice member Preston Barla writes, uh, the Rings of Power is truly an impressive feat. All the money is on the screen through its impeccable production design, costumes, and effects. Uh, manages to wield the power of Tolkien's fantastic world building while making unique and stunning touches of its own. Wonderful character work, too. That's good to hear. I like hearing it's this great. good character work. Uh, the movie podcast wrote, Rings of Power is cinematic excellence. The scale of the story has never been done before. Uh, making each moment epic and breathtaking the marriage between practical and computer generated effects will set the standard for everything that follows uh daniel baptista writes the lord of the rings rings of power is an achievement in cinematic storytelling that redefines what's possible for television immersive and epic the interconnected worlds of tolkien feel grand and fully realized absolutely memorizing sci-fi wires vanessa armstrong writes I've seen the first two episodes of Rings of Power. Yes, yes, sorry, yes, it's as visually stunning as the trailer promises. It also sets the stage well for a clearly epic tale heading our way. I like some characters slash storylines more than others, but I'm hooked and I'm ready for more. Uh, Deciders, Alex Zalman writes, I've seen the first two episodes of Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. It is stunningly gorgeous to look at and... And the score is beautiful. I know I've been wondering about that. What's the music? It's going to live McCurry. up to Alan Shores. Uh, it also takes a while to get going. Maybe that's what my friend meant when they said it's a little bit slow. Uh, it also takes a while to get going, and there's a lot going on. But for fans of the movies, it'll take you right back at points once it's rolling. Our friend Perry Nemiroff writes... Uh, the two episodes of Rings of Power are in, and so far, so good. The production value is pretty remarkable. One breathtaking visual after the next, and the level of detail in the costumes and production design is something else. As for the story slash characters, these episodes have lots to uh, lots of work to do, introducing key places and players. Most make an impression quickly, but the biggest winners were... Okay, help me with the names here. Uh, Nazanin 
Boniades, uh, Brown, Brownwin, and Markella Kavanaugh's Nori. Especially impressed with how much I was able to share or they were able to share uh, in their passion and goals in just two episodes. Uh, Carrie Lane Perry writes, let's scroll down a bit. Um, these episodes have lots of work to do introducing key places and players. Most make an impression quickly, but the biggest winners for me, oh, sorry, I think I accidentally put in, uh, I accidentally pasted in uh, Perry's thing. Sorry, uh, I missed on that. All right, next one. Uh, the New York Post writes, The Rings of Power. So I've seen the first two episodes. I had been skeptical but I was very pleasantly surprised. It is actually good, very good. Visuals and tone are just right. In my opinion, a great addition to the Tolkien world. Discussing film rights, in the first two episodes of The Rings of Power are, so far, very great. The trailers have already shown how the show's brilliant visual spectacle, the seeds are planted for a rich and intriguing story that left me wanting more. CGM Magazine writes, hey, I can finally say I've seen the first two episodes now of The Rings of Power. As a fan of the Lord of the Rings lore, I found it, out, I found it outstanding and left me longing for more. Uh, the wait between episodes is going to be excruciating. Andrew Salazar writes, I can now say that I've seen the first two episodes of Lords of the Ring, Rings of Power. They are as cinematic as fantasy can be on TV. Feels made especially for Tolkien fans and is as epic as Lord of the Rings should be. It's pretty good what we're hearing now again just because all these particular uh and, and there were more i just didn't we we didn't sure. want to take a half hour going through everything just because these particular individuals enjoyed it doesn't mean that i will uh doesn't mean that you will whatever but i mean you'd rather come out hearing that everybody is loving it so far and wanting more and now again these are just the first two episodes maybe they are as great as everybody's saying they are and then maybe it goes off a cliff. Again, I like the first episode of Obi-Wan. I love the first episode of Obi-Wan. And then we know how I felt about it after that. So maybe that's what will happen here. But I love hearing this. I love hearing that people weren't just gushing about the visuals. Because we all knew the visuals were going to be great. This is the most expensive film uh, tele television show in the history of the medium by miles. So we knew it was going to look good. But I love the fact that we're hearing people talk about laying groundwork of the mythology, the character development, all these story threads being laid. That's the part to me that is very, very exciting, despite the fact that my friend in one or two of even these then says, hey, it takes a bit to get going. It, it's slower. That part concerns me a little bit, to be honest with you. But hey, I, I love reading what I'm reading. Rob, you're hearing all the responses we're getting so far. I'm going to see this thing on Wednesday night, which I'm very stoked about. But what do you think about what we're hearing? Well, you know, as a lifelong fan of science fiction, fantasy, and horror, a lot of my life was spent watching things that weren't very good. <laughs> there was there was there was things that are and, and the fantasy it's true. <laughs> the fantasy genre itself. I mean, I remember when the Lord of the Rings animated movie came out. We got half of that. It was kind of like, you know, eh. And then you'd get things like Dragon Slayer, and that was fine, you know, or Crawl. And the fantasy genre was never because the technology really didn't exist to realize those worlds the way you'd want to see them realized. And then the storylines were rather generic. I mean, look, even when Ridley Scott did Legend, Tim Curry's Darkness is one of the, still the greatest so good. physical creature design I think ever done. When we got to see Lord of the Rings, it was a game changer. And, you know, suddenly fantasy writ large on the big screen, it worked. It, it People loved it. I want this movie with just forget the money that was spent. But in terms of the ambition and the scope and what they're trying to achieve after Game of Thrones, I want something that can continue on with the legacy of great fantasy filmmaking on television. And it sounds like they nailed it. And who doesn't want something like this to succeed? I want this to be good, man. If we could have, I remember we talked about George R.R. R. Martin a couple months ago talking about how the fact that his new Game of Thrones series and the Lord of the Rings were coming up and hearing George R. R. Martin said, I can't wait that both of these shows are going to be on TV at once. Yeah. How great would it be as a fantasy fan if we could have a really good Game of Thrones, which House of the Dragon is off to a great start and a really good Lord of the Rings going at the same time? Uh, I Again, I've always said we live in an embarrassment of riches. The time that for anybody who's a fan of, of genre, you know, whether whatever your jam is, I mean, there's great science fiction shows on TV. I mean, I might not love Star Trek, but if you're, it's still we're getting great Star Trek. We got some great upcoming Star Trek coming next year. 
it, it, the fact that we get so much rich stuff, superheroes, mm. fantasy shows, science fiction. I never thought we'd live in this day and age. But have it two? Dude, come on. Chris, I don't personally know anybody who's been as excited for this show as yourself. Vibrating. Again, just reminding everybody, your dog is named Gimli, Gimli Son, Son of, of Gloin. Yeah. Um, so you're hearing these reactions. What's your takeaway from everything we're hearing? I'm so happy. When you were texting us last night, I was just like, yay, yay, yay. <laughs> All of this is so good. Um, well, and, and to be fair, too, about the slow start, Tolkien starts slow. Yeah. It starts slow. And if you can give Dune that grace, too, of that world building, yeah, yeah. you can give this that grace, too, especially when you have lush, lush visuals. I mean, come on. That's a piece of art. That's gorgeous. I am planning my meals for this we are going to do full <laughs> hobbit and eats <laughs> gotta figure out what my 11sies is gonna be i'm no, be our feet well yeah because they're no gonna hobbit. have it but they i'm don't pretty exist sure they had 11sies yeah second breakfast I, and all i can have 11sies i'm not beholden to this and dinner also, and supper <laughs> yeah all of it all at once but the thing i want to remind people about too just like i was saying with clue is if this show ends up not being your version of lord of the rings or or that kind of world Go back to the books, go back to the movies. There's other media out there so that if this isn't your jam, let it be somebody else's. You can you can dislike it. And when we have our after shows, maybe there'll be moments where we dislike it too, but it doesn't have to be something that continues to divide people too. Well, I mean, yes. And, and already I know there are certain elements out there that are already writing. They've already pre-written 18 hit pieces and yeah. hate pieces people on evil. People love dying on hills yet. these days. This they just love dying on hills. I don't even want to walk up a hill, let alone die on well, one. Well, I mean, the thing is, let's say that, that this wildly diverges from the original text. It's still within the confines of what it is can be a great story. Exactly. You know, great example of that. I was, just, I was talking with somebody else about this this morning, which is this. You know what? I don't want to hear about well, this diverges from this. You know why? Because as ungracious as we comic book people can be, it is pretty much acknowledged that one of the great comic book movies of all time is Civil War. It ain't got shit to do with the comic book. Oh, yeah. It takes so many liberties and diverges from the original comic so much. But you know what comic book fans did? Hey, that's fine. We've got the comic book. Exactly. The movie was great, even though it was wildly different from the comic book. And if, like, that's at the end of the day, that's all I care about. Judge material by its own merits. And listen, again, I love the first episode of Obi-Wan, and I didn't, I mean, there were moments of Obi-Wan for the rest of it that I enjoyed, but overall, I did not like Obi-Wan. I wish that I did, but you know what? But I'm judging it on its own merits, not by... Well, Alec Guinness would have done this differently. Like, just judge it on its own merits. And if you don't like it on its own merits, like I didn't like Obi-Wan, that's totally fair. But just do then what Chris said. Say, you know what? I watched it. Didn't work for me. I thought this part didn't work and this part they didn't work. And then once you've done that, let everybody else enjoy it and move on and go back to things you do like. I mean... I, does fandom have to be more complicated than that? No. If it didn't work for you, say, you know what? This didn't work for me and here's why. And then be done with it and move on and talk about things you do. Yeah, I mean, see, I, I've always looked at, approached everything because, as a, again, as a longtime fantasy sci-fi fan, I've read many science fiction books or fantasy novels that have been adapted. And sometimes the adaptations are wildly divergent. I mean, even the Foundation mm -hmm. series that was on. The Foundation series is quite different than reading the books. And I quite like the series. I, I did too. Pretty damn good. I, you know, I did too. I'm like, okay, you, you know, you take inspiration from it. So if this story gives us great, well-drawn characters and, and tells us a great story within this world, I can accept that, you know, I can, but that's what, what I, what I don't like is when I don't get great characters in a great story. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that, that will, that will be the be all and end all. And by the way, we won't know for sure, even with the first two episodes, right. like uh, again, we've had other first episodes. I love the first episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. You know how I feel about that show overall. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, again, so we won't know in the first couple of episodes, but at least it sounds like it'll be off to a good start. And that's always a good thing. So I don't know. Question is for you guys. What do you think? I mean, so far the response is coming out, even from something like the New York Post is saying, hey, we've been skeptical about this. We have right. not had a lot of high hopes for this, but we got to tell you, we thought it was great. I don't know. What do you think about what we're hearing? Whatever your thoughts are, jump down to the comment section below and leave those thoughts there.
All right, guys. With all that down, it's now time to move on and start taking your live comments and questions. We are now opening up the Super Chats. If you guys have a thought, opinion, theory, observation, or question, go ahead and start firing that in now. Be aware that we only leave the Super Chats open for a couple of minutes, so you only have a few minutes to get them in there, but fire them in and we'll address them now in the second half of the show. Now, before we get to those live questions, we want to take another second and thank one of the sponsors of today's video, our friends, the Ryan Reynolds' own folks over at Mint. We want to take a second and thank the sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month, I thought, What's the catch? But after talking to them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. They cut out the cost of the retail stores and pass those sweet savings directly to you. And guys, I have been using Mint Mobile for months now, and I could not be more thrilled with the service. I also couldn't be more thrilled with the fact that my phone bill now is literally one third of what it used to be with my previous major care. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. And thank you to our friends at Mint Mobile for sponsoring this episode of the John Campia Show. Okay, guys, we're going to get to your live questions now. And as always, we're going to start with our channel members. So, Ray, what are some of our channel members saying? All right, Calvin Severo Pano writes, Hey, John, Chris, Rob, how hey. did you feel seeing the doctor, Matt Smith, having sex on house of the dragon it, hey it was a very game of thrones scene and matt smith uh getting it on and house of the dragon was a very very game of thrones kind of scene it it fit it fit in there i will was, say this matt smith has got himself into some pretty good shape because he was <laughs> he's always been on the you know the the more fragile looking side of he's things. a leaner fella but he's he got himself in some pretty good shape for this show yeah well, e even in morbius when he's dancing around that's true i forgot about that in morbius the the i'm sure to be upcoming academy award nominated yeah. role for gosh morbius. i'm probably gonna be like my biggest physical media purchase of the year <laughs> all right wow. what's next all right we just got one in from alex von golem golem yeah bonjour mo bonjour mon ami. Mon, ami. mon ami i'm on vacation in quebec city nice which is so beautiful Wanted to say that the show and hosts are just freaking awesome. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate that. And listen, make sure you visit the old quarter of Quebec City. I, I have visited Quebec City a number of times. The whole province of Quebec is just absolutely gorgeous. Hope you have an absolutely wonderful time there. And merci beaucoup, mon ami, for sending that in. Appreciate that very much. All right, what's next? All right, we got one from Jack Wallace. He writes, my mother-in-law, who loves Star Trek, asked my son Aiden if he liked Star Trek. He said no. I'm a Star Wars fan like my father before me. <gasps> Proud dad here. That's some good parenting, boy. Jack that and Aiden are <laughs> fine folks, by the way. I mean, I mean, I mean it, 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 Star Trek versus Star Wars thing aside, just that your son would say, I am a Star Wars fan like my father before me. That means you're parenting right. You're mm -hmm. parenting right. I like Jack, that. we're going to have words about this, though. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about this. Yeah, right, that next? was the last one, but I, I just got to give a shout out to this show called This Fool on Hulu. I forgot. I binged the whole thing. The thing is hilarious. I, 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 I keep running in about the, it. I've not heard of it before. The Hispanic? But a people running yeah, in it's a, like you know, because I grew up with, uh, 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 let's say, cholos in, in my high school. So Polly from Latina Slam. I Slant. love that culture. I mean, that show is funny. If, if he said it was great. That, check it out. Yeah, Very Pauly good. from Latino Slant is a great YouTube channel who comments on these things. He said the show is absolutely yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have to check it out. Thing. Ooh, <laughs> what's it about? It oh no, we'll well, go we don't have time for that. We're, we're going to keep going. But it was that the last one. Yeah, yeah. All right, then let's move over now into our super chats. What do we got? We've got some support from Alec Akarian. Thank, so you, thank you, so Alec. Much. Mr. Old Blue Eyes, just sending some love. Great show today, guys. Oh, Love's thank you, you, Mr. Old Blue Eyes. Oh, again, oh, like we just say, it's great when people want to send stuff in just to be supportive and say something nice. So thanks for that, man. I, I didn't know Frank that. Sinatra watched the show. I know. <laughs> Start Sam spreading the news. 
<laughs> From Sam Fisher. today. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Fisher writes, I love Clo- Clue so much, but I also love the 100th episode of Psych, which is a Clue parody. Even bring back Christopher Lloyd, Leslie Ann Warren, and Martin Mull. Wow. Tell you what, a lot of people for many years have been telling me that I should watch Psych. I've oh, never seen so a single good. episode it's of good. it. It's good. Um, but I've always heard that at some point, I'm going to sit down and probably binge a bunch of it's it. It's great. Everybody talks about it. All right, what's next? From Mr. Uh, My Comic Planet, have you seen the video of Tom Hardy fighting in a jiu-jitsu uh, competition? Dude looked amazing. Note to self, don't F with Hardy. Yeah, he's legit. Yeah. Like, he's he's legit. So, I mean, maybe not as legit as Alan Horn, but, <laughs> like, he's not on the cover of Karate Magazine like Alan Horn is. But he's legit. Like, like, I, and I don't know if he had that background before doing Warrior, or if he got into it as a result of Warrior. But uh, yeah, dude's legit. Looks really good. All right, what's next? I just have too legit to quit stuck in my head. <laughs> too legit. From Andy, hi John. Please book a theater for your doc film. Yeah, I think we're gonna do that. I, I think we are gonna book a theater somewhere in the LA area for uh, a fan screening of my little documentary movie trailers, a love story, and uh, hopefully have a little meet and greet at that. So we'll keep your ears open. We'll announce it sometime soon. All right, what's next? From Dante Sarecki sending in a $20 super Thank chat. Thank you, Dante. Thanks, hey, guys. So I had an epiphany last night while eating dinner. I haven't tried the matzo sticks and sour cream yet, but I think I've had its more popular cousin, quesadilla and sour cream. It was right there in front of me. Dude, I will never have a quesadilla without sour cream. I Actually, I tell them whenever I go into the restaurants, like there's a place called, what's Dos, Dos Anos or something like that at, at Universal City Walk. There's a... Uh, a Mexican restaurant that just opened about two years ago. Oh, yeah. Ago. They have the Mezcal flights. Yes. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they have yeah. a great quesadilla. And I always get the the uh, uh, asada. I always mm-hmm. get the asada one. And I always say, hold the pico de gallo, extra sour cream. Oh, man. And guacamole. And it's wonderful. Oh, it's wonderful. So I concur with your assessment of that, Dante. Well done, sir. But now you got to try the monster. Man, I feel like there's a Four Serranos trip in our future. <laughs> I think so. There is. Oh, it's so nice. We're going. And then we can do the flight. It'll be great. All right, what's uh, next? From Edgar Magna. Any other horror icon comebacks? Pumpkinhead? There's one called Pumpkinhead? <laughs> I'll tell you what. You haven't seen Pumpkinhead? No. Pumpkin no. There's one called, I love that. that. I mean, like that's what my dad calls me. Directed by Stan Winston himself. <laughs> my third favorite horror film of all time is only half horror. It's more of a spoof of horror, but it's also got very, very much horror elements. Those of you who watch me for a long time, you know what I'm going to say. Uh, Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Mm. If you guys have not seen this movie, it is both hilarious, insightful. It's a deconstruction of the horror genre. It's, it's, it's done office style, where it's a behind-the-scenes documentary crew following a guy named Leslie Vernon, who is aspiring to be the next supernatural serial killer. Uh, in the and and it imagine it's it's all in a world where Freddie and Jason and Michael are all real, and all exist. Buddies? And it's absolutely hilarious. I love this. But then in the last act of the movie, it switches gears to it's okay. Now it's a legit eighty style horror movie, <laughs> and it's wonderful. If you get a chance to check it out, I, I would love to see Leslie Vernon get a sequel. I really, really would. All right, what's next? From Slice of Brie, do either of you have a horror flick that genuinely freaked you out? The fourth kind with Mila uh, Jolovich messed me up. Don't judge me. My two favorites. Uh, first, no film has ever messed me up ever. I still can't watch it alone in the dark. Is American Werewolf from London. Still can't watch that show alone in the dark. Gotta, I got to watch it either with the lights on or somebody else in the room. And The Descent. <laughs> Love the descent. You got one that just freaks me well, out. Well, the the original Exorcist. Good for you, Craig. When right, I, I couldn't when I first watched it. I waited. I got it on videotape when I was thirteen. I'd never seen it. I couldn't get past the Iraq sequence. I mean, I, I couldn't even get. It was I was I was so terrified because I'd wait. I waited to watch it at midnight, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, I I I because it, it was the tone of it. Yeah, nothing particularly scary happens. It was just the tone. I'd never seen a movie at 13 where it was so relentlessly realistic there was no fantasy to it it mm-hmm. was so and then i waited I, the next day at noon middle of the day i watched it and i was freaking terrified Ugh. And the original uh, exorcist scared me so much because i was raised catholic oh so I, that, I, it made me want to be catholic ugh. because ugh. if i was catholic it would have had that much more of an effect it was on so me. terrifying to me and then the the tim curry miniseries of of it like screwed me up, made me severely scared of clowns. 
Also messed me up a little bit with Tim Curry because I was like, but he's beautiful and now he's in this and I don't understand what's can, happening. Can I I'll tell you guys um, about this uh, one premium message I got from yeah. Free Metroid Hat? You can. He said he watched Deadpool 1 and 2 last night. Ooh. Do you think Professor X or maybe even Magneto will be in Deadpool 3? Ooh. Well, I mean, we just saw Pat Stew, a version of him. Yeah, I mean, look, I would love to see Magneto just to see them, the interplay between Ian McKellen and Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. That would be funny. That would be very, very cool. I would enjoy that. I think we're gearing up, though, for new versions of those characters, though. And I don't yeah. think you would introduce the new versions of those characters with Deadpool. Unless it was some multiverse joke. Yeah. Could be like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that was uh, all I had to say. Sorry. Thanks, Ray. That's it? <laughs> you had nothing more to say, Roy? That's Come all. on, Ray. That's all I got. Uh, from Bruh. Bruh. The real plot twist in Nope is the reveal of the little fart hand from the trailer. Little fart hand. Little fart hand. Little fart hand. What's the little fart hand? What fart hand? Yo, I got a fart hand. There's a fart hand. I gotta go watch just it like again a little, now. A little... For this fart hand. Like what? Oh, a little. Nope. Can someone explain that to me in the chat, please? Yeah. I'm very curious. Please explain the fart hand because that just makes me think of signs when the alien had like the gas finger. Because when that moment happened, it was like, oh my, my disbelief is back to where it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> From Sam Fisher, are you going to watch the Sandman watch party of episode six with Mark Hamill and the rest of the cast at 1 p.m. on screener? I've heard that was happening. I didn't know. Was that today? Is that today? Because we're all, I mean, we, yeah, we're, we're here. We're, yeah, we, we work. We do shows. So probably not. But I, I'll, I'll watch the, <laughs> is it going to be recorded? Does it go up on YouTube? Can you watch it again? I'd love oh, to see nice. that. I would love, I'd love that. to see that. Mm -hmm. The extremely masculine super giga. Did you see the Sabak toys from Black Adam? Oh, sorry, Giga, what's the last part? Giga ah, C? Ah, oh, thing. no, Giga Chad. Okay. <laughs> did you see the Sabak toys from Black Adam? I did. What do you think of them? It's, to be honest, it, it's a little goofy. Yeah? Like, the, the, the character design, this is, I guess, the villain in Black Adam, the toy they've had the oh, toys okay. on. It looks, it's a red devilish looking character uh, with horns and everything. It just, it looks kind of good. Oh. I mean, it I haven't could, seen. I'll have to look. It's up. cool. The character design's cool, but I'm like, what kind of movie is this? All right, what's next? Yeah, well, the we'll find out. It's gonna be a little weird. Scroll down just a bit. Weird things. There we go. From Dylan Payton, sending in an almost twenty dollars super chat. Thank, Thank you, you Dylan. Dylan. Hey y'all, I'm about to watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy for the first, very nice. first time. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. My question is, do I watch the standard or extended editions? You guys are the reason I started a movie YouTube TikTok page. Don't Love even you guys. say standard editions. Yeah, standard ex edition. No. No. Yeah. Standard. standard. Yeah. Stan no. Standard edition. That's what you start with, and then later. Later, you go back and watch the extended to, to see the extra stuff, and it'll give you a. I think you will actually. Not only do I think it's the better way to watch it, but I think if you watch the standard edition first as your first viewing, you will better appreciate the extended edition later if you go back and watch that second. I mean, that's now I'm I'm alone at the table in that theory, but <laughs> alone in the room trust that me, theory. that's the way to do it. But Rob, you have alone on the planet. No, I look. I would say this, if nowadays in the world that we live in i would go with the extended editions because they make the experience richer and that the return of the king is almost an hour longer so oh, i it's, know <laughs> it's i mean it's it's but i think like especially in in fellowship of the ring the scene with aragorn and boromir before they go into the mines of moria is that scene mm -hmm. is it's so great and no because there's but because here, here's the thing about that well, all the, I still contend, like, do you not agree that if you watch the standard edition first, you will have a greater appreciation for the extra material if you watch that oh. second? But the other thing is this, is that while there are great scenes taken away, do you believe in any way that the standard theatrical released versions make no sense without that those extra oh, no, scenes? Oh, no, the, right? so no, that's, no, no. That's what I mean, right? Yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're great. I just think that now, because we live in the world where people are used to binging TV and things like that. True. The reason that stuff was cut out was he had to deliver contractually a certain length. He couldn't go over a certain length and, mm -hmm. and they, yeah, they a lot were, of people were not going to go to the theater to see a four hour. Movie. Right. Yeah. And so they, that's why they had to cut things down. I just think it's a richer experience. The, with, with the, uh, with I mean, the, essentially though, you're asking someone to go through nine hours of footage so that they can go back and watch 12 hours of better footage. <laughs> I mean, but at the same time, we are, I'll say that, 
All of us in this room saw the regular edition first yeah, no before choice. we saw the extended, Well, yes, that's right? true. Yeah. So I was ready to see experience. a four-hour movie. Me and my friends brought in a giant pepperoni pizza behind our backs, and we're like, all right, let's do this. I would have yeah, lived Ninja there. Turtle? All right. I am a Ninja Turtle. What's next? <laughs> From Ryan Lawner. You know what would really help WB as they try to deal with James Wan running to Disney with Kong? A Swamp Thing show. Why has no one tried that? Well, <laughs> uh, well as it turns Ryan. out. <laughs> I like that Swamp Thing, that last one they did. I thought it was okay. Yeah. I, like I thought it started well. It's it for those who don't remember, Swamp Thing literally got canceled after one episode. Yeah, they played the whole season, which makes me like I never understood this. Like there were so many questions I had about the old ownership of Warner Brothers. They literally, if you're going to cancel the show, don't announce that you've canceled it until after the show has done its season. The fact that they aired one episode and then announced to the world that they canceled it, it's like it completely disinvested anybody or like a lot of people from just watching the rest of the series. Every, a, lot of, every, a lot of people just checked out of the show after that because, well, they already canceled it. I mean, I never <laughs> understand that decision. It's the magic eight ball they have in that office. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? From Brendan M. Today, approximately, is our 10-year anniversary, John. Ten years ago, I first watched you. Wow. Through all the significant parts of my life, your shows have been a constant. Looking forward to more. Bring on the filthy. Oh, thank you so much, Brennan, for being around for that long. You know what else we share an anniversary with? John Carter. <laughs> Appar apparently, it was ten years ago today, the great movie, John Carter, should have been called John Carter of Mars, was released ten years ago, apparently today, and magnificent movie with the worst marketing campaign in history. Ever. Ever. Ever, ever. And you were telling me, Rob, that there's an article. There's an right? article. I, I was tweeted by one of our viewers today. Uh, the Rap apparently has an article talking about, I mean, they're couching it as one of the biggest bombs in history. I have a whole theory. I think I, I, I've always believed that Bob Iger, once he found out George Lucas was going to sell Star Wars, he didn't want George Lucas to have a reason not to sell it to Disney. And since so much of Star Wars was inspired by, by the Barsoom tales, that Bob Iger had to figure out a way to get rid of that movie. <laughs> See, I don't but, believe that story. Uh, I don't believe that story. I, I think one there's bit. a lot of evidence to support I, it. I completely disagree. I know, but <laughs> but I'm curious because I haven't read the article. I wonder if he even gets into that. But I love John Carter. I think it's a wonderful it's adaptation. So good. Uh, it's so good. And Is that if, on Disney Plus? That's a good that's question. A good, I don't know. I should watch it. I, I would I mean, like. It's just a great. Fun sci-fi. It's a true sci-fi movie. Yeah, you know and it's, I, mean? I mean, and the original. It's based on a book called The Princess of Mars. You know, and by the way, if you'd like, I can loan you my. <laughs> I knew it. Three Three help? Let me check to see if it's on what? Disney Plus for Rob Fox. <laughs> All right, Rob Fox. It Box. is on Disney Alert. It's on there. All right, so apparently it is on Disney Plus. So yeah, you, if you haven't seen it, you really should. Um, uh, why am I freezing on the name of the guy Taylor, Taylor Kitsch. Kitsch? Taylor Kitsch. Taylor Kitsch, who was poised to be. There were a couple of years there that Taylor Kitsch was poised to be the next big breakout star. Yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, the sputtering of John Carter, the fail, the failure of Battleship. And uh, Savages, the Oliver and Stone movie. Savages, which I, really which I actually like Savages. I do yeah. too. Um, that also had uh, Taylor, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Mm -hmm. and uh, John Travolta's in that. I mean, isn't, and, it, uh, isn't it Blake I'm, in it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Blake that? Lively. Blake yeah. Lively. Yeah. Blake Lively's in it. Yeah. Um, it's just it's a really good little movie but i mean just whatever he he should have been the next big breakout star but a couple of these projects just kind of sparted that unfortunately all right what's next from andy it makes sense that matt reeves directed batman because just like the character reeves has a secret identity as producer jonathan <laughs> who's the That's mask right. though <laughs> oh in, yeah at the night at night he's writing batman films yeah. in when, the day when you monologue to yourself jonathan what do you call yourself who? What are you guys talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. This is complete lies. All right, well what's done. next? It's his cover. Suthius. Okay, all right. Matzah sticks with sour cream is legit. I, I, I don't, how many how many people are going to have to have right in and affirm all this to you guys before you will get over yourself? I don't know. How many people have bad so. taste, John? <laughs> I just, I don't want dairy on dairy. Maybe it's also because dairy doesn't like me that I have such an issue with this combination. Hey, that's legit. That's totally legit. But like most people who have lactose issues, I'm like, I'll eat it. I'll just get sick. I don't care. <laughs> All right. What's next? Uh, from Casey Mack, one of two. 
Guy, did that get you? It's just, I feel terrible about you eating something knowing that it'll make you sick. I do it to myself, though, Rob. Oh, I God. made me this way. Um, one of two. Guys, do you feel that horror should move away from the old horror killers and just make and develop new ones? Seems like we're always falling back to Freddy, Michael, and Jason, even Chucky. Um, That's all I got. So. Okay. okay. Um, I would say, Casey, you are absolutely incorrect about that. There have been lots and lots and lots and lots of horror movies that were not Freddy, Jason, or Michael. Like, actually, especially in the last five years. Like, we have had tons and tons and tons. of Bloomhouse has cranked out so much horror to to once in a for one out of every 30 horror movies to go back to a freddy jason or michael there's nothing wrong with that so uh, but i think he is also meaning like should we create more horror icons you know like we keep can there be what's the new iteration like is there a new michael or is there the a problem. new freddy or a new you leather can't face? create them you have to put out a movie and then have the movie completely capture everybody's magic right. let's right. go to um stephen lang's don't make a sound. No, what's, what's the name? Uh, don't breathe. Don't breathe. So that is you creating a movie that could have like one of your great horror like leads, right? But it's not about we should create one. No, every every horror movie tries to create the next Freddy, Michael, Jason, whatever. They all try to do it. But it's a matter of does the movie become an outstanding smash hit, a critical darling, a pop cultural thing that really builds yeah. itself into the zeitgeist and all that kind of stuff there, there's no sitting down and just making it it's the audience has to make it i also think horror is a product of its time the the idea of the psycho killer is not part of our world now right really i mean now we've got a lot more quiet horror a lot more psych psychological horror highbrow horror a24 horror you know horror is sort of different now well when you're living in the darkest timeline it's sure gotta be when you're living in the <laughs> darkest timeline i like that all right, what's next? From a man. Seems like with it having a slow start, it's a great move that Amazon is premiering with two episodes. More shows should continue to do this. Can't wait. Uh, again, we've been talking about this a lot, especially with She-Hulk. Like it's, She-Hulk was the type of show that I think they, it would have benefited from launching with like two episodes. Um, again, just to give you a better feel for the show. Mm. I, I like it, especially if you are more than just the stupid six episode season. Because then when you start with two, suddenly now you only have four weeks left in the entire series. Right. But yeah, I, I like this move. Unless you really feel, you know what? Our debut episode of whatever show you're doing really does lay the groundwork and introduce the world and give a great feeling. Then, perfectly good. But I, I like the idea of two episodes. What about you? I do too because it gives you, I mean, it gives you more meat and you, you sort of know the direction of where the show's going. And in a way, depending on how the, like, look, I thought House of the Dragon was a great first episode. I don't think that we, I love the way it ended, you know, her turning and looking into the camera as the new, newly anointed queen. I was ready to go. I didn't need a second episode. I would have watched the whole thing at once. Mm -hmm. But I think with like certain shows, John, getting more meat and understanding where the show's going to go benefits the show, benefits the viewership. It really depends on the show. Yeah. Right? Like She Hulk, I really wanted a second episode. Me too. I wanted it to get weirder. I was like, yeah, okay, I get what's going on now. Now let me get the weird stuff. All right. What's next? From Jay Master, so I talked to a few of the AMC and Regal Theater managers in Seattle and Renton about Universal Studios releasing Halloween ends in theaters and on Peacock simultaneously, and they are not happy about it. It was not the arrangement. They had a deal. It was going to be a theatrically released film in an era right now when the theaters, which by the way, the theaters saved the studio's asses. I mean, we've we've been talking for two years about how, and it's been true that the the theaters have been needing the studios to save their asses. The studio, the theaters saved the studios' asses too by being by staying in business, being open, and letting movies like Top Gun have a place to play and make one point four billion dollars. To have a place to play for Spider Man No Way Home to make two plus billion dollars, they saved the studios, and now they hit this empty desert when they've got nothing legitimate coming out for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and then you do have a movie that has been planned to come out and then the studio pulls this it's weak and it's a new movie and it's a new movie that the theaters need and but i you know it of course they're not happy about it and they shouldn't be happy about it um it, it's a dick move to be honest it is a it's dick a move. dick move all right what's next from john wheelbacher Agree on praising Peacock for bringing NBC content under one roof, but isn't Zaslav doing the opposite with HBO Max and his open for business mandate? 
No, it's a completely different thing. Like NBC Universal is NBC. They have a network, NBC network, and they have a lot of content that everybody, that a lot of people watch. And you as a company, you own this broadcast network and you own the streaming service. It only makes sense that you would bring that content under there. And by the way, there would be nothing wrong if Peacock Universal says, you know, we got a couple of pieces of content that maybe doesn't fit what our thing is. And we think we can make some money off it if we license it out to other people. It's a totally different situation than the WB situation. Absolutely different. All right, what's next? From Calvin Severo Panholm. Hey, I fell asleep every time. I fell asleep every time I tried to watch the Lord of the Rings movies. The Hobbits ones I never watched again after watching it, first watching in theaters, and I never read a single book, or and I don't know the story of the Second Age. What are the odds of me liking the series? <laughs> Slim to none. Okay. I mean, the problem do you want to? <laughs> Listen, you're asking people what the chances are that you'll like this show who have never watched the show. Yeah. I can't answer that. I, I've never seen this Lord of the Rings show. For all I know, I'm not going to like it. So I, I, until I see the first couple episodes, I can't give you any guidance whatsoever. I will say this though, the way it looks is if you fell asleep and could never get through the original films, which hey, not all movies are subjective. If the Lord of the Rings doesn't work for you, it doesn't yeah. work for you, nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. But it, on the surface, it looks like if you can't get through those films that maybe the show won't be for you. But again, I can't say that definitively until I see the movie myself. Exactly, if you've seen the trailers and gone, hey, this looks really cool, I'd like to give this a shot, then you probably should watch it. If you're watching it and thinking you just need to watch it for the sake of being, I don't know, part of the zeitgeist or something, I don't think you need to do that, man. There's so many other shows you can watch. Yeah, it, like why waste your time watching something that you have high doubts you're gonna like yeah. when you can spend time watching things you do like. Life so. is short and Lord of the Rings is long. <laughs> That's a t-shirt right there. there Life go. is short and we the Lord of the Rings is artist. long. All right, what's next? But if you're a fan of naps, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> from Andy. Like Ray. <laughs> from Andy, thank you for the AMSR on uh, open mic yesterday, Rob. That villain monologue is one of my favorites ever, and you crushed it. Loved your villain ASMR voice. But what did we this? ever determine what that was from? No. No, I, I yeah. So somebody wrote in and asked <laughs> Rob this long diatribe, asked Rob to read this long thing in this Chat ASMR voice, and it was clearly from something, but mm -hmm. I didn't recognize what it was from. I didn't recognize it. I'm sure the either. ending scared the crap out of our neighbors, though. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, God. I if they heard think, it, I want to if any of you guys watching live knew what that, who saw that, knew what the, it's oh, from Naruto. Naruto. Okay, there you go. Oh, come on. Red. Oh, oh. <laughs> thank you for that opportunity. I very much appreciate it. All right, what's next? From Sam Fisher, I assume you aren't going to do a uh, ROP pre show because if of the She Hulk after show. Well, no, power. we can do two on, we can do two on the same day. We can. We can do something at like two o'clock and something at like four o'clock. But. We're not doing a Rings of Power pregame show right now because we know nothing about the show. We know nothing. Else. Like with She-Hulk, we could do a pregame show prior to the first episode because we are all so into the MCU. We know this world. We know these. a lot of these characters are going to be in it. We know all of that. So we didn't do a pregame show for uh, House of the Dragon because we knew nothing about what this was going to be like. Uh, we're not going to do one for Rings of Power, but we may do some Rings of Power pre-shows. It depends on after we watch the first episode, what we kind of feel like. We could do something like that for Andor too, because we know that world. Yeah, yeah. so we will definitely see an Andor pregame show. For They're sure. Def right from episode one, there definitely will be, so yeah. All right, what's next? From TLH6187, Virgin likes Dragon Ball Z here. <laughs> do you remember DBZ being shown on Fox Sunday mornings before Toonami? People like act like this is an urban legend. I don't remember I don't that. Recall I that. I was a Toonami kid and that's how I got into anime. And then that was my gateway drug to making my mom drive like 45 minutes to Conroe to take me to this weird little comic shop. Shout out to Bedrock Comics, who would give me all the um, subbed VHSs that you couldn't watch. <laughs> oh, that was great. Have you ever been to Frankenstein's yet? No. We should take a team trip to Frankenstein's. <gasps> Yay! We should totally take a team trip Dude, there. Why are you do this to me? But maybe just leave your wallets at home. Yeah, man. Because you can spend Bruh. a lot of money there Bruh. real quick. Because you'll walk in there knowing you don't need anything, mm -hmm. and you'll be there for five minutes, and you're like, I need that, and I need that. Oh, and I got to have that. Plus, I, I just it. feel, if I, if I went with you and I, like, bought something, I'd feel you would be judging me. You'd be thinking, you know, you Why? really don't you Dude, really don't I need bought that. you something. I know, there. you actually did. D That's this, true. I bought this, I bought this Deadpool there. I Like, I saw By the way, like, I got to have this when I saw I this Deadpool statue. I love 
what you bought me. I have it in the new Rob Observatory. I have my a little Moon Knight display. That statue you got me is dope. Aww. Anne was the first one to notice it. We were, it was it was my first trip to Frank and Sons, and we were walking by one uh, booth, and Anne said, "Look at that Moon Knight. Rob would love that." And I'm like, "What?" And I looked at him like, "That is gorgeous." Well, I'm about to pay your wife back for that one. I got, oh yeah, I got yeah, yeah, that's she, right. I'm gonna, I think it's coming today. She would love that. Yeah. All right. What's next? Just real quick, and not for any particular reason, but are they going to be making a the Batman hot toy? I mean, I'm just wondering, not for the, any the, real reason. The the uh, no association Batson at all? Batman, like your movie, Batman? No, 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 no real reason. I'm just wondering. <laughs> the, yes, they're making. They're, oh, it's incredible too, and they're making the bike. And are the make, pre-sales? I've already the pre-sales. Yeah, the pre-sales, up pre-sales are up, but you know, in art, that company I was telling you about, in art, they've got the thousand dollar, the Batman figure. That's the all figure right. to get. Just All right, wondering. what's next? From Mr. Holtbrook, in Prey, the Predator didn't self-destruct. Do you think his tech sh- would play a part in the second one? I... I I don't know. Like, you got to remember, the Predators are individuals. Like, just because one Predator did one thing doesn't mean a Predator would do another. I... I and what second one? I don't know that there is a second I, one. I, I don't know. So if I'm not. Prey well, two, electric boogaloo. Yeah, I'm not really clear on what it is you're asking. Like the, you know how the predator didn't self destruct. All his tech that he used is still on the the ground. Will the person? Oh, or the girl. Oh. So when the indigenous like people that. start Gather using them. Yeah. yeah. Now. Well, now you're talking about a butterfly effect of the the course of North American civilization changing. <laughs> Suddenly I mean, now, uh, North America's Wakanda. The predators have violated the prime directive that, by leaving their tech behind. That's yes. right. Maybe All right. they're going to want a piece of the action. What's next? From My Comic Planet. Yesterday marks the 22nd year anniversary of Daniel Radcliffe Ra- bleh, Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grant, and Emma Watson being introduced as the Harry Potter trio. Oh, God. Wow. I watched the original press conference they had, Man Time Flies. That wow. was 22 years ago. We're going to be dead soon. I still, Not all of us, Rob. I still, I was in Saskatoon, I remember, when the first movie came out. Like, they were chill. You know, when Anne and I watched that HBO Harry Potter revisit special they did, which was, mm-hmm. I'm not the biggest Potterhead in the world, but my, that was such it a was beautiful. Magical. Dude, that it was, opening. It was. It was magical. Huh. It, I cried that opening. But you go back and you look at them then. They were children. Yes. They were children. And now Harry Potter's the bad guy in the Lost City. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. He's Weird Al. Yeah, he's Weird Al. Even if sake. you go from the first Harry Potter movie to the Deathly Hollows Part Two. Yeah, they, yeah, they've grown up. We literally we, we watched, watched them, them grow up. Grow up. It, it's it's crazy. And a lot of people, a lot of people who are watchers of this show, maybe probably grew up with them. Mm-hmm. So it's it's really crazy. All right, what's next? From Al Renshaw, I saw Dragon Ball Super twice this past weekend, and mm. guess what ad played during my second viewing at an AMC? Shook my head in disbelief, for why, and said, what the fuck is this bullshit? My heartbreak didn't feel good. Uh, again, they play it in every <laughs> single fucking showtime of everything they do. They, it's got to go. Well, as we know, she signed up for another year. I'm hoping we get a new one oh, man. where she says something even better. I, I want her even... to just like interview people mid-breakup. I would hate it less if every time I went, it was a different version of the ad who played. I would hate it less at that point. You know, my favorite part of that ad is when she just sits down on the chair and you see what she's watching. She's watching Creed one. She's watching Creed. And by the way, the the underlying message of AMC theaters is nobody comes to our theaters because she walks into a completely empty place. (laughs) AMC theaters. And God damn, talking. we need the help because no one's coming to our <laughs> That's theaters. That's the heartbreak. She's <laughs> talking. Heartbreak. <laughs> All right, what's next? From Connie Zing. Hi, Connie. Rob. Connie. I can't wait to see uh, Hellraiser and Hellhound with you soon. Chris, I recommend reading the Hellhound Heart first. That was my entry into the films, and I ended up watching eight of them. Yeah, I can guarantee you, well, Connie, Connie, that ain't happening. I mean, I will I will read a book. Absolutely. I'm fine reading horror really? genre. Yeah, that's fine. My brain's messed up. I don't want to see the visuals, though. That's my mm. issue. I don't want to see them. I don't want to have that happen. I like to read the book because then I can just put it down and go, no. <laughs> Done. There's a big, uh, I think it's at the Arrow. There, There's a Q&A. They're showing the Hellraiser, the first two Hellraiser movies. Really? And screenwriter Peter Atkins is going and they're promising other Special surprise. And we want Chris to I told I us. told Connie about it today. I, I texted her. Or <laughs> you want me to be outside the theater? Right? She got tickets. I bet you some of the new cast are going to be there when they say some surprises. I bet yeah, you, they, like might they, they, they might do that. They might do that because I think the new 
pinhead is a woman. Mm -hmm. I think a so. Female, yeah, that's female, what they said in the chat. A female pinhead. Yeah, I'll I cover mean, that for you. I right? date her. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> All right, what's next? Of course. From Hero 75, should the new Clue movie be set in the 1950s like the original movie, or should they move it to another time period? I, I think they should do a completely modern day take on it. I think if you're going to do I, a yep. new version of it, I think you go a completely modern take. I'm sure whatever they do will be great. I mean, obviously, you got a good screenwriter. Ryan Reynolds is behind it. I'm sure it's going to be great, but I would love to see a completely modern day. I agree. And you know, one of the problems, I, I remember I went back and watched, do you know they relaunched CSI? Like the original CSI? Yeah. CS, it's now called CSI Vegas. Vegas, right. What? So I, I used to watch a bunch of the reruns of the original CSI back in the day. It was right? great. Yeah, I never watched all of it, but I, I watched a bunch of it. It was great. In watching some of the new ones they did, I realized to do mystery stuff like this is getting harder because the way technology is and the way um, cameras and surveillance systems and DNA is like, like, how do you plausibly get away with anything? <laughs> like, it's, right. it's, so it's, I realize it's becoming more challenging, but I would love to see them address that in a new clue. You know what? Speaking of what we were talking about earlier, it'd be really interesting to do a brand new psycho killer movie where a psycho killer can't get away with his murders because of that very reason. How yep. can a psycho killer, how can Michael Myers be Michael Myers when you have all the surveillance technology? Ring camera cameras phones? and everything. How yep. do you do it? Well, I mean, we, her body disappeared. Ping her phone. Oh, okay. There. Yeah, mystery. We found her. Like, I... All right. What's next? From Suthius. I'm not a fan of famous people landing acting roles either. Recent example is Thundercat, famous bassist, as the modifier in Boba Fett. Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. So famous huh? people who aren't actors right. getting acting roles? Oh, when, when Flea was in the thing. Listen, I have no problem. Flea is an actor. Yeah, well, Flea's done some acting. <laughs> but I would say I have no problem of a famous musician or just famous individual for small little parts like as a matter of fact if you want them to cut their teeth on anything little small roles like that i'm perfectly good with you want to take a random famous person i don't care like we're really guess when they try to take famous youtubers and put them in movies that never works out but shack uh yeah like instead of like if you had told me that bad bunny was going to get a small supporting role in some movie coming up, like Bullet Train. I have no problem with that because it's limited. You're not putting a lot of weight on the shoulders. We don't, we're not looking for a great thespian turn. It was a small role and something like that is great to cut your teeth on. I have no problem with that. Where I get really iffy is when, yeah, this person with zero experience in this, yeah, they're the lead in this new movie. I'm like, what? Really? Do you have so little respect for the craft of acting that uh, whatever that's but i don't mind so i don't mind seeing flea pop up in a small role it's the voice of donnie on the wild thornberries he's a an acclaimed actor i don't even know what the wild thornberries is oh man it was a great cartoon show that yeah. tim curry was a voice I was gonna on say, is that the band that tom petty was in <laughs> that's the traveling wilbury oh the traveling man. yes the traveling <laughs> wilbury yeah. nigel right. thornberry who was traversing the globe and finding things with his daughter liza it was great all right, what's next? <laughs> uh, from Wotan. Are there actors today who remind you of past actors? For me, I always thought Jason Siegel is the modern day Judge Reinhold. That's oh, pretty that's good. Great. That, Wotan, that is a great comparison. You know what? <laughs> Bang. Yes, that's, that's the one. <laughs> that's it. You know what? I was, watching, I was watching a little bit of Beverly Hills Cop the other day. It's so good. And I remember just thinking, what happened to Judge Reinhold? Because there was like a 10 year span where he was in everything fast mm -hmm. times raised on high i'm afraid you just heard me say a lot of things no i said everything, everything. like he was in and then all of a sudden i, I can't remember the last thing i saw him in yeah the Santa claus three is that the last thing you remember seeing I him think in? so yeah but wasn't yeah, he also like uh, playing himself in community or it was one of those shows and they're Did like he, probably he, he, played, might have. he played judge judge reinhold in in one of those shows it was like a joke that's okay. I'd like to see that, but like he was just like in everything for the longest time, and then just suddenly gone. All right, what's next? <laughs> From Dwayne Fernandez. Hey guys, are you reading any books right now? Silence. I, Silence. And I, the yeah, I, I don't. I'm, I'm most of my read. Like when you go to my bedside and eat stuff on my iPad, it's not none of it is fiction stuff. Like I'm I'm reading various leadership books. I'm mm -hmm. reading one. 
actually a really, really good one on modern influences of social media by a friend of mine who actually uh, wrote it. And I'm reading that right now, but I, I don't read a lot of like fiction stuff these days. I just finished, they shouldn't have, I think it's called, they shouldn't have shot his dog, the oral history of the John Wick franchise. And now I'm in the middle of Heat 2. Oh, Michael that's Mann, right. Heat 2, Ben Gardner and, and, and Michael Mann. It so far? It's pretty, I'm almost done. It's pretty good. I'm re it's, it's both a prequel and a sequel. And it's, I mean, it's good. I like it. I'm enjoying it a lot. All right. I'm next? reading a real peppy one called The End of the World is Just the Beginning. Ooh. Ooh I'm like reading uh, Artemis by Andy Weir. Oh, Logan loves that book. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. reading it right now. I'm Aww. reading a real page turner called Everybody Poops. Oh, man. That's a good one, Taylor. Oh, I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> You're reading uh, that now? Did five John Campion memberships. Just Who did point that? V. Again. Thank Again. You, v. Oh, my God. Thank you so much, Dang. man. Dropping the memberships on people. Every Thank you so much, there. dude. I'm mostly reading scripts. I need to find a good book to read. All right, what's next? Raymond Verada, for a Top Gun sequel casting, bring back Clarence Gilliard <laughs> Jr., a.k.a. Sundown, who became yes. a computer hacker post-Navy and pl uh, pl pilots a drone strike, at, or plots a drone strike at a high rise at Christmas. Gilliard is also Theo from Die Hard. The quarterback is who, toast. Who was That's Sundown? a lot of dialogue he says in the movie. <laughs> who was Sundown? So, he's, Sundown's the black a uh, fighter pilot. Okay, okay. And Theo, he's wearing the he's wearing the uh, the big sweater, mm -hmm. you know. And it, <laughs> I love him. And that's what he says. The quarterback is. You wanted a miracle? I give you the FBI. All right. What's next? From Cutter Hale, pissed about Halloween. Honk for Jesus, save your soul on Peacock. It's stupid. I'm seeing both in theaters, and everyone should go do the same. Uh, I mean, look, I watched the trailer for Honk for Jesus, save your soul. It's a. T I thought it was terrible. I thought the trailer was terrible. I don't understand why it's not a show. But the people involved, like Sterling, is in, like that tells me there's got to be something to this if you got this caliber of talent mm -hmm. to be in it. So I am probably going to check it out. But I, I won't lie to you. I thought the trailer was terrible. But the talent level in it is so high, I got to at least try it. Yeah. All right. All right. What's next? <laughs> From Joel Rolton, let me compare Rings of Power to Star Trek TOS. You better watch yourself here. Star Trek focuses on one crew and expands the myth throughout five seasons. Rings of Power looks like it has too many wheels spinning from the start. You haven't seen any of it yet. <laughs> what are you, Let's just write like, it all off. What, actually, our criticism has been the trailers haven't really told us anything. Wait a minute. <laughs> You're saying this shown us too much? There's too many things going That's on? That's kind of told Five me. seasons? There's only three seasons. I was gonna say there's three seasons of TOS. Come on, now I wish there were five. You would give me hope that I've missed something. A new hope. Uh, anyway, so yeah, actually, I, you know what? That's not true. I'm, he's talking about animated. There's three well, seasons of the live action and two seasons of animated. Was there oh. two of the animated? Yeah, two I, seasons. I, I always episodes. thought there was one. Two seasons. One is longer than the other. Okay. Right now, he's regretting sending that super chat in. <laughs> no, he's not because he's right and I was wrong. I see what you did. That's cheeky. There are five seasons of the original TOS if you include the animated series. All right, what's next? From Robert Tari, new Andor clip looks awesome. Fingers I, crossed. I just heard as we were starting the show, what? I saw that a new clip has dropped. We haven't seen it yet, so we'll probably talk about it on the show tomorrow. Oh, my God. All right, what's next? From BJ, Rob, if you like Madeline Kahn, Peter Boyle, and Marty Feldman, you may like Orion Pictures' pirate pastiche Yellowbeard. Peter Cook is hilarious. David Bowie cameos as a shark on Prime until next week. I've never seen that. Me neither. And I love all those actors. And you love Madeline Kahn. I love all those actors, I have actors also too. never seen Yellowbeard. Oh, I've yeah. never seen it. And we Peter Boyle that. is in Outland, mm. the shirt I was wearing yesterday. I love Peter Boyle. He's the villain. Oh, man. And Peter Boyle, if I'm not mistaken, was he not also in the Michael Keaton comedy where they all break out of an asylum. The, the dream team? The, the dream, dream team. team. Was, I, think was Peter Boyle, I think Peter Boyle was I in that one, too. I think he is. Oh. And yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't I mean, thought about that movie in a long yeah. time. That was like around the same era with of Michael Keaton movies. Like There was that and uh, the one where the, the, he works at the car manufacturing plant. Yeah, uh, Gung Ho. Gung Ho. That like, Ron Howard directed. That's right. So those all kind of came out in the same era. All right, what's next? From bruh, bruh again. Mm -hmm. Last time I went to see Thor 4, everyone was so ready for the Nicole Kidman ad. My friend next to me yelled, all right. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I would have done it too. Yeah. I it's become up. a meme. That yeah. is the thing. The Nicole Kidman ad has become a living meme. So uh, whether that's a good or a bad thing, I'll leave that up to you to decide. All right, what's next? From Carlos Sosa. Hey guys, what are your predictions for MCU at D23? No, no. We're not going to sit here and do a half hour spot on our predictions. <laughs> but all I say is like, big bombs. Yeah. Big. Are big we going to do a D23 pre-show? Yes. 
<laughs> we will do it. We'll, we'll probably record like a vlog, you and I, going, yeah, yeah. going to Anaheim. Because so, so Robert and I are going to be going to D23. Uh, we're going to be there for a couple of days. We're going to probably document us going there, what the sights and sounds of D23, and then the event, the two hour presentation. And Saturday morning at 10 a.m. So you'll probably see a bunch of that stuff then. Mm -hmm. All right, what's next? I what's feel D23? personally victimized that I'm not going. I'm Look so at my sad face, Disney. Going. I am a Disney character. I wish you were going. Gosh. Lords of the Long Box. What are your thoughts on rumors Squadron Supreme coming to MCU with Cavill playing Hyperion? It's, I, 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 listen, a rumor. I hope to hear it's true. But until I actually hear it from a real source, it's bullshit. I, I don't believe one bit of it. Now, that's again, me saying I don't believe it, that doesn't mean it's impossible. I, I, I That would be great to hear, but I ain't going to get excited about it until I hear it from a legitimate source. I'll tell you something, though. If they announce the Squadron Supreme, There's I'm going to be a lot of I'm, excitement. I'm going to lose my shit a little bit. Yeah, I, I, there'll be a lot of excitement. But, but until that happens, I don't believe it. I don't believe a bit of it. Right, yeah, I don't either. Next? From Stupid. Al Renshaw, what are your thoughts on Shia LaBeouf? I loved him most recently in Honey Boy and Peanut Butter Falcon, which I thought he deserved an he Academy Award nomination. Shame he won't be in Don't Worry, Darling. Yeah, I remember I couldn't believe I couldn't remember if it was him or if it was Army Hammer that was removed from Don't Worry. It was Shia LaBeouf that was taken out. Listen, Shia, take everything else away. Take all the other stuff away. All the other crazy stuff that we hear and the idiosyncrasies and all that kind of stuff. He's a brilliant actor. There's a movie he did with Brad Pitt. Uh, where Brad Pitt played a character called War Daddy. It wasn't the tank, and I can't remember the name oh, of the film. Oh, Fury. Fury, thank you. And he's he steals the movie. Like, he absolutely steals the movie. Logan Lerman is it. John Bernthal. Yeah, was David Ayer directed that. Um, it's it's a it's a really good movie, and he steals it. I mean, he truly is. Peter Butter, Peter Butter Falcon is something like... He is a remarkable talent, and and I, I worry and I fear and I lament that I think... The nonsense that he's had surrounding him too has prevented him from being up there in the discussions with Leo DiCaprio, mm -hmm. um, up there in the discussions with Jake Gyllenhaal as being maybe one of the best actors of this he's generation. Phenomenal, because he's yeah. got all the talent. He's great. I mean, yeah. even when he was a child actor, watching him play Louis Stevens, you were just like, "Oh, this kid is amazing." He's and a Holes. young Jim Carrey. <laughs> Holes was great. That's Every right. time I hear Shia LaBeouf, though, I think of the Rob Cantor song. All right, what's next? You guys don't know that. From Johnny Got Lost, any word on the Scarface remake or the Hot Cheetos movie? I mean, Antoine Fuqua was supposed to do a Scarface remake. Yeah. I think the director changed. And I, I don't know what the status of that is anymore. No idea? Yeah, I haven't heard anything, but if it does progress, we'll we'll talk about it. All right, what's next? From Ron H., suggested by a super chat, watched every uh, EEGA. I don't know what that is. A tale of love, revenge, and madness. A man is murdered over the love of a woman, reincarnates as a fly, and proceeds to take revenge of the man who killed him. Sounds like a Crow remake. Yeah. Uh, is, that this, is that the one with Mr. Bean? Was it the fly? I, I, guys, you can't it? write in in acronyms, uh, unfortunately, so, so we have no idea what we're talking about, unfortunately. All right, what's next? From Jedediah Elias, don't want to drive out two hours to see Rings of Power in theaters, but if the reactions are this good, maybe. I mean, I listen, especially since you have to wait less than 48 hours to watch it on TV. Myself, I I only have to drive about 40 minutes. I probably would have driven two hours. Now, Grant, you're talking about a guy who is so psychotic about the theater experience that when the movie theaters have been closed for like six months, I drove three and a half hours to Vegas <laughs> where because the theaters weren't open in California anywhere. And in Vegas, they were playing New Mutants. And I drove three and a half hours, watched the movie with my buddy, left the theater, got back in the car, and drove three and a half hours back. Would I drive three and a half hours? Did you play any poker? No, I didn't play any poker. No, we didn't have time. I had to drive there, get in the car, and drive back. Would I drive three and a half? Like, would I drive to Vegas to see this? Probably not. But would I drive two hours? That's three hours less driving overall. Yeah, I probably it's do. Rush hour in LA. What's that? That's rush hour in LA. Yeah, yeah, that's rush hour in LA as it is anyway. So why not? All right, what's next? From Doctor Stinky. Hey, John and crew. What's your favorite MC movie? MCU movie so far? The uh, I believe Avengers, the first Avengers movie, is the best comic book movie ever made. So I'm I'm going to stick with that. What's your favorite MCU movie? You know what? It's Infinity War and Endgame. They're great, Chris. I have to think about it. Iron Man know. One. A lot. A lot of people would say Iron Man One. All right, mm -hmm. what's next? I would go Winter Soldier. Mm. Now, a lot of people like that one too, yeah. Jonathan Vigoa, I saw 3,000 Years of Longing and Idris Elba steals the show with the Jin's backstory. I wish Tilda Swinton's character was stronger, th was stronger though. Get it? 
Wish. Wish. Yeah. Uh, listen, I. Uh, this is, of course, uh, Mad Max Fury Road uh, director George, uh, George Miller. Miller. Uh, his new movie. I have been fascinated by it. Then I heard not such great things about it coming out of the festival circuit. So I've kind of been hesitant to get out and see it. But it's Idris Elba. I just liked him a lot in Beast. So as and I love George Miller. Too. Yeah, yeah, as a director. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, it looks very, very interesting to me. All right. What's next? From Jay, Terminator 2 versus Aliens for best sequel. Who you got? It's, I'll go T2 because it just it's a lot of heart. I, I got to go with Aliens because I think it's the second best action film of all time. Plus, it's so different. It's so different from the first movie. But, but I was going to say, that is a similarity between Terminator and that. Both films, the original film is actually quite different from the tone of the sequel. Probably more so with Alien to Aliens. Yeah. But I mean, those, I mean, you can't, there's no wrong answer to that question. That's the, but, so I would go with Aliens. Right. Me too. What's next? Well, you're wrong. From my <laughs> From my comic planet, John, after signing that new mega deal, I guess WB is making Matt Reeves the new Christopher Nolan. No, not necessarily. Like, it's just the first of many. Um, like, it, this is not an uncommon kind of deal. It's just really the first one the new regime has made. While they're trying to get rid of their J.J. Abrams one, they have gone out and signed this one with uh, Matt. And there's going to be more. I, I think you're right. I think the next one up is probably going to be James Gunn. I think that's the next one we're going to hear that they're locking him so. up. And I think they're going to, there's going to be more uh, to come. But actually, I'm not going to lie. Under the new ownership, I wouldn't be surprised at all to hear Christopher Nolan sign a new deal with uh, with Me Warner neither. Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, I'll go to Lambert. I'll say within the next six months, we're going to hear about Christopher Nolan coming back into Warner Brothers. I, I don't, I've, no insider information here. That's just me speculating. All I right. wouldn't know about any of this. I don't even <laughs> know why I'm talking right now. All right. What's next? From Logan Landis, two different restaurants and two different sets of mozzarella sticks and sour cream. Don't like it yet. I'll give it one more try. Hey, that's our first person to write and say they tried that they didn't like I it. Second. I'm going, I think it's second, but okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I, but you know what? Hey, listen, not, I don't like tomatoes. I mean, you're no matter how good a dish is to one person, it's not going to be good for everybody. So I, I, I've no doubt not everybody will Do you like, like tomato it. sauce? I do. But Me too. It's a very different taste than trying to bite into a tomato. I agree. I'm the same. Like I, I don't like tomatoes on anything, but tomato sauce, absolutely. Ketchup, sometimes. Mm. All right. What's next? From L. Leonardo, been with you, John, since four year consideration wow. days. That's it's, back when Matt was on the show. It's been ten years. Ten years since Genesis Rodriguez said you missed out. That's. It's actually one of my favorite video clips of all time that we have. So, Genesis Rodriguez who was in that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie about uh, where he's the town sheriff and uh, the guy with the super fast car. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was I, she in the one, too, with the, uh, the oil spill with Mark Wahlberg? I, I believe she was in that, yes. And, and she, she had was a series in on TV. The, uh, the, the Spanish novella comedy with Will Ferrell, something Padre, Casa de Padre, oh, My Father's yeah. House, whatever. She was also one of the main voices in um, uh, Something Six. What's the animated superhero film? With the big, big hero, six. Big, hero six. big hero six, she was one of the main voices in that. But anyway, she was doing the press junket for that Will Ferrell comedy. Comedy. I had met her before, and I I couldn't make it. I couldn't make it to the thing, so I had to send one of my staff to go do it. And thankfully, they caught this on video because they came back and showed it to me. I couldn't believe it because they sat down and they were like, "Where's John?" And like, uh, John couldn't make it today. It's, it, but it's his loss. She goes. You tell John for me. You tell him, screw you, John. You tell him that for me. And I'm like, this is one of the greatest video clips ever. So I I, I still have that very much because Genesis Rodriguez. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of held on to that one. All right. What's like next? From by Jane. the way, by the way, super impressed, Eleonardo, that you even knew about that clip <laughs> or remember that clip. That is hilarious. I think I showed that clip once like 10 years ago. So good wow. on you for remembering that. All right, what's next? From Jay Master, I am really hyped and excited for Disney Plus King Kong live action series, especially with James Wan attached. Again, it, it will all depend on how involved is James Wan going to be. Now, it is his production company. So, I, I mean, it, he could actually have a significant hand. He's not going to be directing, directing a pilot. It, but, I, I mean, if he directed the pilot, that would be huge. So, I, I'm very curious to see what they're going to do with it. All right, what's next? Suthius. Jessica Gao, Daniel Creighton, <laughs> Domi Shi, Chloe Zhao, Deborah Chow. Good to see more of my fellow Asian brothers and sisters doing great things with Disney. You know what? Be between 
the Asian representation and Canadian starring and everything. <laughs> Disney, uh, I mean, really, you look at Canadians are like owning in the MCU right now. And behind the camera, a lot of Asian representation as well, which is great. They're expanding out the talent pool, which is uh, obviously working for them very well. All right, what's next? From Naraman, you're right. The Lord of the Rings trailer music is yikes. Haha. <laughs> Sounds like a slowed down pop song. Have expected to hear "Free Your Mind" and the rest will follow. I, that's, I, I just don't get you what they were cup. going for. It's dangerous. I just don't get what they were going for. Like the, the, the Comic Con trailer was so epic and so good. And and again, I'll go back to what I mentioned before. It just feels like a complete. It feels like a completely different show or movie. It doesn't feel like it's a trailer to the same thing. And the music was certainly one of the problems. All right, what's next? From Dr. Bright, Chris, Robin, John, what will your hero name be? My Chris name's Robin Chris John. Carr. I'm already a superhero identity. <laughs> like that's, that's already my thing. I'm verisimilitude. Oh, that's my hero name. Could yeah. you be no, verisimilitude? No ah, verisimilitude. Yeah. I like it. Someone called me that too. Mine would have to be only because of this, only because of my role-playing game stuff. It would probably be Rampage. Rampage was the first DC Heroes role-playing game character that I made. Oh. And then later, years later, when I started running and uh, game mastering our our role playing game, I actually made my character the main villain. Uh, so uh, yeah, rampage would be that. I like that. All right, what's next? That's it. That's it. That's it. Thanks everyone. I oh, and, no, and, no, I don't. No, nothing from the. No, nothing. All right, and guys, that'll do it for today's installment of the John Game Show. Thanks for being here, guys. Don't forget uh, two things. Number one, at three p.m. today. That's three p.m. Los Angeles time, six p.m. New York time. You guys can figure out what that is in your time zone. We have our She-Hulk pregame show. Of course, tonight at midnight LA time, the new episode of She-Hulk comes out. We've got our She-Hulk pregame show at 3 p.m. If you've got thoughts, theories, opinions, speculation, questions about tonight's episode of She-Hulk, come on in. We're going to talk about that for like a half hour to an hour. Make sure you guys come back and join us for that. And also, I got homework for you guys. If you missed this at the beginning, we have launched a brand new podcast feed for our She-Hulk Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, and or after shows and pregame shows. The podcast feed is simply called After Show. Do us a favor. Do this a solid for us. Go down. You'll see in the description of the video, we got a link to it. Go and find it. Subscribe to it today. Uh, leave a rating, whatever. We want to see if we can get After Show, which we just dropped, I think, two days ago. We just launched it like two days. We want to see if we can crack the top 50 chart. <laughs> on iTunes chart. We want to see what we can do. We can only do it if you guys help us with it. So go find that podcast feed. Subscribe to it. Again, the link is down in the description. Subscribe to it today. Comment on it. Rate it. Do all that kind of stuff. Let's see if we can get this thing into the top 50. That would be amazing of you. And of course, don't forget, come on back for the John Campion Show again tomorrow. And it's been awesome to have you guys here. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the thumbs up button on it. I want to thank everybody in the room. The one and the only Mr. Robert Meyer Burnett. The wonderful Chris Carr. The ever-present Ray Aura. And of course, producer Jonathan Reeves. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. <laughs> my name is John Campia. And until next time, my friends, bye-bye. <laughs>